You're watching Capital One Bowl Mania. Welcome, everyone, to Atlanta. You're watching the 2019 Celebration Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. Folks, 800 miles separate Lorman, Mississippi, and Greensboro, North Carolina. But these two schools have been inextricably linked since 365 days ago when they last were on this field. Today is about a rematch, retribution, retaliation. But when we come back, we talk celebration. And back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. An ode to celebration. First, let's celebrate a city, Atlanta, a city that's steeped in history and culture, spawning luminaries that have shown us the way. Atlanta, the only North American city destroyed by fire. But the only blaze now is characterized by the celebration of the Black Mecca, the cradle of civil rights. We celebrate the cacophony of music that keeps your head ringing. How do we know? Because I can see your heads bobbing. Celebrate brothers and sisters using unity and service as tenants of Greek life. Celebrate a rematch that looks oh so familiar. Celebrate the victories, yet learn from the defeats. And yes, celebrate a national title. To put it bluntly, unless otherwise instructed, let's celebrate everything. And in the words of Cool and the Gang, bring your good times and your laughter too. We're going to celebrate your party with you. The celebration started more than 24 hours ago, and it won't conclude until well after the game. North Carolina A&T, Alcorn State, part two, the remix. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones alongside Jay Walker, Dusty Dvorak, Tiffany Green, and Roddy Jones joining us in just a moment. Jay, let's start with you. Last year, it was A&T coming away victorious. Alcorn State telling us they feel like they left some plays out on the field. And I'm thinking about my mom's favorite song, The Big Payback. Right. I've been covering HBCU football for a number of years. Never have I seen a football team carry a chip in as much of an edge mm. from a two-point loss a season ago than this Alcorn State team. But A&T doesn't care anything about that, Dusty. Well, A&T is looking to become a dynasty. They don't think they can win. They expect to win. A three-peat if they win today and four out of five Celebration Bowl championships on the line here today. And four games in a row in this bowl have gone, been decided by 15 points or fewer. As Alcorn State winning the toss, Fred McNair, the head coach of the Braves, his team will receive the opening kick and have the football first. It'll be Javon Morrison back deep for the Braves. The Braves losers in this game a season ago, 24 to 22. Game that has been highly anticipated, highly debated for 12 months now since the last time they both met. A&T, the champions of the MEAC, Coming off a win against North Carolina Central several weeks ago in Alcorn State. Defeating Southern in the SWAC championship game. for the HBCU National Championship. From the two yard line, it's Nico Duffy. And he got towered at the 16 yard line. That's how you make a statement to begin the football game. Well, Tiffany, that's a pretty good start. You too, Roddy. Tell us what you got planned for us. Well, I've had the pleasure of graduating from an HBCU and the privilege of covering many of these players and programs. And so I'm going to take you underneath the helmet throughout this game, give you the why and the motivation for these players. But, you know, there's layers to this HBCU experience. And for more, we'll send it to Roddy Jones because he's got another angle covered. Well, Tiff, we're going to talk about the 360 view about this game and what goes on off the field. What does that mean? The Divine Nine fraternities and sororities that are here, the nationally ranked and renowned bands, and all 
also the backdrop of the city of Atlanta, the perfect place to host an HBCU national championship. Yeah, so many different layers, Roddy. Pass complete to LaCharles Pringle, brought down by Amir McNeil. Look at the quarterback, Felix Harper, completing 61% of his passes on the season. What a great story. Filling in in the early part of the season, becoming the number one quarterback, filling in for Noah Johnson after his injury. It'll be a six-yard gain on first down, second down, and four. That pass complete at the 22-yard line. Guys, what do you figure to the keys to the game today brought to you by Dollar General? Well, John Maine Martin is the key to the game for A&T. This is one of the best players in all the HBCU. And for Alcorn, they got to take the ball away. Led the FCS with 34 takeaways this season. Felix, Felix, and more Felix. Felix, the trigger man, Harper. He's got to be that guy for Alcorn State. Swack Offensive Player of the Year. And defensively, a and has to turn Felix Harper into Felix the Cat. Okay. Make him run for his life. <laughs> well, you know, they say cats always land on their feet. We'll find out. Third down and threes, two for two. Make that three for three. Picks up the first down with Charles Pringle with his second reception, a five-yard gain. And they move the chains. Jay, how important is this good start? for Felix the Cat coming off the fact that he struggled in the SWAC championship. Yeah, three consecutive passes, trying to get his confidence back. And Dusty, how about this? A year ago, they rushed for 300 yards. Now they're clearly trying to establish we can throw the football. Different identity on this offense without Noah Johnson. Harper, a better thrower than a runner. Taking a shot up top. Pass incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. Meanwhile, Fred McNair on the right, head coach in his fourth year. SWAC coach of the year, back-to-back -back season. Sam Washington on the left, head coach of North Carolina A&T. In his second season, 18-5 and five overall. His fourth appearance in this game, former defensive coordinator at the school. Second down and 10. Four receiver formation. Harper in trouble and set. Back at the 21-yard line that time, they dialed up a little bit of pressure and got to him. Michael Branch and Justin Cates, number 94 with the sack. And it sets up a third down and long now for Alcorn State. Well, these inside guys, both the defensive tackles, we're going to see them win inside. Just a bull rush on the inside guard, gets the initial hit. And sack on Felix Harper. The defensive tackles expected them, talking with Sam Washington this week, to have success on the interior. An outstanding inside rush. They're on second down. Loss of seven. 36 sack of the season. A little draw play. That's going to be Nico Duffy, the team's leading rusher. And Duffy is going to be brought down short of the first down at the 28-yard line. So it'll be time to punt after that seven-yard gain. Corey McCullough and to punt for Alcorn State. And uh, North Carolina A&T going to get pretty good field position after this punt. And I wonder what Alcorn's going to learn. They came out with five consecutive passes, got sacked the fifth time. Now they run the football. Now the punt's coming up. North Carolina A&T establishing control of that line of scrimmage. Corey Banks watches it bounce. Fields it at the 25. Now back at the 20. And back to the 25-yard line where it'll be first down and 10. Folks, coming up next on ABC, we'll have two more bowl games for you. SMU battling FAU. In the Cherubundi Boca Raton Bowl. And at 7.30, Chris Peterson coaching his final game for Washington against his former team, number 19, Boise State. An interesting, juicy storyline there in the Mitsubishi Motors Las Vegas Bowl. Good job by Sonny Dykes this year at SMU, trying to win 11 games. And it's a cool matchup for Coach Peterson against his old team. Deciding to step aside at UW. First down and 10. We get our first look here at the Aggies offensively. Khalil Carter out of the shotgun. And we're going to be calling this guy's name a lot today. Jermaine Martin picked up about two. Brought down by Juwan Taylor. Jay, better between the tackles or on the edges when you talk about Martin? Edge of your seat runner that can do it all. Mm. Leads the nation in yards per carry. Had he had more attempts, would have led the nation in total yards. Fantastic runner. Edge of your seat runner. He can do something special with the football every time he gets it. Vision, power, speed. When I watch him on tape, he's got it all. Banks in motion now sets in the slot. 
Bell moving to the top of your screen. And Carter going to take off with it. He's going to be stopped up about three yards short of the first down. Setting up a third down and three. Webb making the tackle on the play for the Braves. He picked up four yards. And that's what's different about this offense this year under Chris Barnett. Had a chance to talk with the offensive coordinator yesterday. Khalil Carter, much more of a runner, a physical runner. Big guy at five foot ten, 230 pounds. So last year with Lamar Raynard, much more of a thrower. You're going to see quite a bit more quarterback run game within this offense. They only ran for 38 yards in last year's game. Third down and three. A little pressure coming off the edge. And he's not going to make it. Carter keeps it himself. He's brought down for a loss of two yards. Solomon Muhammad is the alpha dog on that defense, and he makes the tackle on the play. Fourth down coming up, three and out. Well, it's all about setting an edge, right? We're going to see him set this edge right here, but then watch Solomon Muhammad from the backside on the chase down play. One of the best linebackers in all the HBCU. They set that edge, nowhere for Carter to go, and Muhammad finishes off with a big tackle and a quick three and out for the Alcorn defense. That brings in Michael Rivers to punt. He's standing on his own 16-yard line. He's averaging a little over 40 yards per punt on the season. Pringle back deep. A beautiful high spiral and a fair catch called at the 28-yard line. 42-yard punt. Got a time under the field just underway. When we come back to the A, Tiffany, drop a little knowledge on you on some quarterbacks from this great city. Back after this. Plus four free Samsung Galaxy phones, all on our super reliable, super fast network. Welcome back to Atlanta. Well, you know, this is a homecoming for both quarterbacks, and they told me they are relishing in this moment. The fact that Felix Harper and Khalil Carter were watching from the sideline last year. Harper charting plays, waiting for this opportunity. Khalil Carter recovering from a broken femur after a car accident. They said they are delighted to be playing for this national championship, but it's even sweeter if they can win it in front of their hometown crowd. Yeah, good thing that they're both healthy now, Tiff. Great job. Yeah, Carter injuring his femur while home on Thanksgiving break a season ago. Charles Pringle, meanwhile, making that catch and a first down out of the 40-yard line. I tell you, Felix Harper throwing some strikes so far, an 11-yard gain. Well, as offensive coordinator Elliot Ratton told us, he knows where to go with the football, right, Jay? I mean, this RPO offense, he works those inside receivers. That was a strike there to Pringle. He gets the most out of his pre-snap breeze than any other quarterback I've seen in the conference. Makes quick decisions. Back to pass. And he's going to be sacked all the way back at the 28-yard line. Jermaine Williams got to him. He was the first one. Devin Harrell with pressure as well. All right, let's take a look. Coming off the edge, it's going to be both of these guys going to be working here. We're going to see him come off the edge, and then he's going to finish it up inside. This started with Devin Harrell. He wins, gets the speed rush, and then the inside defensive tackle, Branch, able to finish it off for the second sack already here to start this game. My bad, not Branch, but Jermaine Williams. So that's nice a, play. That's up a long second and 19. Turn it quickly out to the 34-yard line. Complete. Mac McCain, the third, making the tackle on the play on Anderson. Three-yard gain. Listen to this. Well, Jad, I don't want to outspeak, but that's one of the best corners, if not the best corner of the HBC. You see that plant and drive and break on the football? Great play by Mac McCain. Not just HBCU football, but FCS football. Yeah. He was an All-American as a freshman. He's an NFL prospect. He's a legacy guy. Real deal. Harper delivers another completion. This one to Chris Blair. And Blair brought down after a five-yard gain just short of the 40-yard line. Ooh, there's, there's an early trend here in this game. Pressure on Felix Harper. He doesn't get sacked, but gets hit as he delivers the football. Has to get rid of it quickly. Already been sacked twice. Pressure there on third down. The interior, particularly, of this Alcorn offensive line. Going to have to do a better job holding up and giving Harper time. And I question a little bit the fact that we know the strength of North Carolina a defensively is their defensive line. Yes. And you're going to ask that offensive line from Alcorn to protect on every single play, they've been pass, 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 haven't even attempted to run the football. McCullough with the punt. Banks feels it at the 22. Looking for an alley and brings it out to the 32. Came loose. 
He put it on the ground, and Alcorn has it. The Braves recover at the Yankees' 34. Well, Jay, this is what they do on defense, right? I know it's special teams, but still taking the ball away. No one better in the FCS. The 35th takeaway for this Alcorn football team. Making a nice return, and bad things happen when you leave your feet. He left his feet in a great strip mm. on the special teams unit for Alcorn State. How about is that with Charles Pringle down there? The wide receiver on special teams getting in on the action. Wow, huge play. So Felix Harper back on the field. Look at the number of turnovers gained this year, leading the FCS. What I love, too, is defensive coordinator Cedric Thornton. He gives out paydays <laughs> for takeaways. Hey, the king bars. size payday there. See if they take a shot here. Harper comes underneath at the 26-yard line complete to Chris Blair. Blair was their leading receiver during the regular season with 781 yards coming in. But I'm going to say it again. We know a t is one of the best in the country against the run, but you at least have to try. You have to show some signs that you will run the football. Mm -hmm. Alcorn relying too much on the left arm of Harper right now, in my opinion. And Deshaun Waller, look, he balled out in this game last year at a buck 67 on the ground. Looking to throw again, but brought down and doing well to lunge closer to the line of scrimmage. Harrell again. Good pressure. There he is, number 50. Led the team with seven sacks on the season. Third down coming up now for Alcorn State. Well, that helmet doing some work with that thing. <laughs> hey, I, I like that. Are those stick marks or stuck marks? Oh, uh, man. I think Lyman he, knows the stick marks. I think, I, I think the way he gets off the rock, that speed <laughs> off the edge, I think he's delivering the blow most of the time. Nice start to the game for Devin Harrell. Three-yard loss on the play. Ball at the... 29 yard line and with their kicking woes this year Jay this is likely two down territory for all four exactly right and McCullough just 10 of 18 Blair in motion Harper comes to him over the middle and he's right beyond that first down marker Radarius Anderson makes the catch Howard the tackle but he are too late and that's why Harper's special quick decision quick set got rid of the ball before there was any sign of defensive penetration Accurate throw, first down. That's the type of throw he has to continue to make. That ball gets out so quick, and that was on a line for a big first down. We're going to try and run it into the boundary. Deshaun Waller pushed out of bounds. Remember, Waller was all the talk last year for the Braves. He was the swack newcomer of the year a season ago. Well, he's got speed, power. Coming into the season, they thought he could have been one of the best running backs in the country. He's had a groin hip issue that's kind of hindered him, opened the door for the true freshman, Nico Duffy. But when Waller is right, he's one of the best in the business, Jay. Special, special talent. Hopper gets rid of it quickly again, pass complete. To Rodarius Anderson stopped up. His forward progress is going to be about, look at that. He got a very favorable spot, a yard short of the first down McCain the third making the tackle the gain of four third and short Felix Harper gets that ball out quick and once again the plant drive for Mac McCain it's catch tackle out there on the perimeter with 29 is in one-on-one -on -one situation <laughs> third and one under four and a half minutes to go here in the first quarter and this is when you have to stand up to North Carolina a and third and short Obvious run situations, power your way for a first down running the football. They line up in the eye, and they run the ball and pick up the first down. Nico Duffy, the, pardon me, that was Waller. Waller and Duffy between them put up some pretty decent numbers this year, and uh, this is where you guys see guys bumping their gums a little bit after plays, Jay. That's what you have to do. If you're all corn state on the offensive line, you know that this A&T defensive line thinks they're better than you. They're trying to beat up on you. You have to punch them back. Hmm. All corn state losers by two points a season ago. They were hoping for this rematch and got it. Sean Waller stopped up right near the line of scrimmage. Fifth edition of the celebration bowl. North Carolina and T has won two of them already. Three of them, pardon me, looking for their fourth today. They defeated Grambling State back in 2017. They've got a couple of wins over Alcorn State 
in the Celebration Bowl. This is where Alcorn State hopes to end the suffering. Waller in the backfield. Harper gets rid of it, incomplete, was looking in the end zone for Blair. And it's third and long. McDaniel with some good pressure. Number 93. And an interesting call coming up now. They've got speed on their edges, man. These defensive ends. Devin Harrell, Jermaine McDaniel there. Excellent pressure, play action. Going to boot Felix Harper out to his left. Allow him to see the field, but he had no time. Pursuit from the backside was there immediately. I'm going to be looking for 82 with Charles Pringle in a spot like this. Nico Duffy back in the ball game in the backfield. Harper over the middle, in and out of the arms. No flag on the play. It's incomplete. He was looking at Pringle. And it was broken up nicely by Reams. Dusty said you should be looking for Pringle. Well, they were looking for Pringle. So was North Carolina A&T. <laughs> Bracket coverage. You have to go someplace else with the football. Safety inside. Ooh. Slot guy there. I think, I think that they might have got away with one there. Yeah. That contact got there a little bit early. I could see why Alcorn was looking for a flag. A missed call there by the official. Well, Pringle was exactly the... right. Double cover, man. It was. They knew where they were going. Corey McCullough in to attempt this field goal from 28 yards out. 10 of 18 on the season. And he knocks this one through. The Braves on the board first. Well, Mark, it was a fantastic drive by Alcorn, but on the other side of the break, the Luminaries come out for national championship games. We'll tell you the story of one of them and what he has done to help these two schools. Super reliable, super fast network. The Celebration Bowl on ABC is brought to you by Cricket Wireless. Smile, you're on Cricket. And McDonald's. Well, those images are of the hardest working man in radio, Tom Joyner, who just recently retired. The AKAs actually presented Tom Joyner with a check for $50,000 in honor of his retirement. But Tom Joyner being Tom Joyner, he donated half of, each, half of that check to each of these two schools. What a job by him and how much he means to HBCU football. We'll continue to tell stories like this on the other side of the break. Four free Samsung Galaxy phones, all on our super reliable, super fast network. Roddy was talking about some of the notable Greeks, and here's a look at some more. Langston Hughes, Jesse Jackson, and uh, I'm not sure who that guy on the left is, but I think he was pretty good at basketball. Just call him MJ. <laughs> Need the initials. <laughs> How about Tom Joyner, who we just honored? Yes. Q, and although you got Michael Jordan there, how about the biggest Q of them all? Shaq. Right, physically, could be. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. Plays at LSU. Back to the action, first and ten from the 35 for the Aggies. Trailing three to nothing. 317 to go here in the first quarter. Dangerous pass complete to Banks. Wow, that was a eyelash from being picked off and coming back for six the other way. One more look at it here. He wrote a break on the ball by mm. David Morrison, but just couldn't come away with it. A little push in the back, but great concentration by Corey Banks to make the catch and pick up positive yardage. Gain of eight on the play. Carter going to pass it on the slant incomplete. And that right there, I question. I think that's an RPO in which Carter's electing to go for the quick slant and not give the ball to John Main Martin. And when they've done this during the year, that's when the offense has gotten into trouble. Well, he had his favorite target, Elijah Bell, man-to-man -man coverage against an outstanding safety in Quinterio Cole. Pass sells high. Maybe he looks at that as a free down, feeling, yeah. that, feeling confident enough mm -hmm. on third and short that they can pick it up with their physical rushing attack. But I'm with you. That's... Typically a play I would think goes John Main Martin all day. Yeah, they talked about giving him the ball 25 to 30 times. Getting a lot of touches. Play clock down to seven. Carter out of the shotgun. 
And the oh. Aggies seem to be a little bit discombobulated and disconcerted on that play. Head coach Sam Washington calling a timeout, his first of three. Well, we talked about the drama involved in last year's edition of the Celebration Bowl between these two teams. Came down to the final moments. Some big plays from both sides, and we talked about how well Alcorn State ran the ball against A&T last year, Jay. Over 300 yards rushing, but it was this huge return by Malik Wilson, the speedster that sealed the deal for the Aggies. And then this controversial play right there. Was he in? Was he out? Which would have given Alcorn State the victory. Yeah. Instead, something they had to think about all offseason long. Yeah, that was Chris Blair that couldn't get his feet down and was ruled incomplete. Let's go to Tiffany for more. Well, guys, there was this burning desire inside Fred McNair and those Alcorn State Braves to get back to this point. It fueled them all season long. They said once they left the locker room here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, they didn't forget about it the entire time. And so to get to the SWAC championship and repeat as SWAC champions and then get another crack at North Carolina a and they said they could not wait. Yeah, that has been their singular focus, Tiff. Great job. The pickup is three yards for Martin, look at this collision, guys. Watch Jawan Taylor. Watch the safety fly downhill. Cedric Dorton said he's the most important player on the defense. And mm. John May Martin keeps those legs driving, and he fights just uh, enough for a first down. Uh, when I see plays like that, I say, thank goodness my daddy made me play quarterback. <laughs> I get excited. Contact. <laughs> agree to Martin again. This time, no to go. Bottled up and a loss of one on the play. And Jawan Taylor, one of the first ones to get there. And one of the things that John May Martin knew coming this game, he was going to be a marked man. Mm -hmm. Everybody on the Alcorn State defense knows when he's in the game, where he is on the field. He's going to have to buckle up. It's going to be one of those days on the football field. Played behind Cartwright a season ago. Transfer from Coastal Carolina. But these teams' uh, defenses intransigent so far early in this game completion and a couple of big hits Lockhart making the catch but met with a lot of resistance from Bruce Allen number 20 and Kinsler as well four yard gain on the play Javen Morrison working as a nickel here today work on that slot receiver it was catch tackle outstanding job as soon as that ball was caught he's on him immediately and He's been a very good cornerback within this defense. Four-year starter, and they've slid him in into nickel with Torrance Wilson stepping up his game. Carter out of the shotgun on third down and six. Carter replacing Lamar Reynard, one of the most successful quarterbacks in HBCU history. That pass incomplete, tipped by Solomon Muhammad. And Muhammad talking to some of the Aggies on his way off the field. Keep an eye on number 49, folks. He is the show. And it was him that said, when asked about Jermaine Martin, he said, you know what? Martin's good, but he hasn't seen anybody like me in the MEAC. Watch his vision. Watch. He's just going to mirror the quarterback. He's just going to follow him, gets in the throwing lane, gets his hands up. It's an excellent individual effort by Solomon Muhammad already being very impactful here in this first quarter of the Celebration Bowl. Fourth down and Rivers into punt from his own 40-yard line. An end-over-end end punt and a fair catch called by Pringle back at the 14-yard line. Folks, this season for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. With seconds to go here in the first quarter. Guys, are we surprised by the low score so far? Should we be? Well, best defense is out there. Each team is the yeah. number one defense points allowed per game in their conference. So no surprises there with it being low scoring. We're seeing the jitters. But the surprise to me, haven't seen John Main Martin get those touches that they said he would get. Exact same. I was just going to the inability for a &T to establish a line of scrimmage and run the football. They were embarrassed on the line of scrimmage last year. It was a point of emphasis and through the first quarter yet to see. Harper hands it off to Nico Duffy. Duffy's dad, Chuck, played football with FAMU. Older brother, Chuck, played at Liberty. And Duffy's been that surprise for them. The freshman had stepped up when Waller was injured. Nico Duffy carried the low, running the football. A little diamond in the rough. True freshman 
out of Tampa, Florida. Had some speed and some shake to him. Former three-star recruit, true freshman. Ran track in his last year of high school to improve his speed and trying to outrun that agile and quick Aggie defense. First 15 minutes in the books. Remember 1996, home of the Olympics here in Atlanta. The remnant, the remnant still visible. Back with the second quarter after this message and a word from our ABC station. Thanks for $25 per line per month, plus four free Samsung Galaxy phones, all on our super reliable, super fast network. In order to be a, a very good defensive man, the first time that ball is snapped, you got to knock hell out of him and let him know one thing. That boy, you gonna be in trouble this evening. You got a good man in front of you. The legendary Eddie Robinson. Wow. That makes my, that makes me want to go do something. <laughs> Chill bumps right there, man. <laughs> could, could you play for him? A, a defensive uh, coach telling you, hey, you just got to go do something to that guy across the ball from you. Right now I play for him. I know that man played for him. <laughs> Doug Williams, Super Bowl champion. The, the Williams brothers right there. That's Mike Williams' his brother next to him. Doug Williams, we know what he meant. And played for Coach Eddie Robinson and was the standard bearer for HBCU yeah. football. That memorable moment everybody will never forget when he became the first African-American quarterback to win a Super Bowl. And for Washington, second down and six. Harper hands it off. Let's go downstairs to Roddy. Well, Mark, in celebration of the 150th year of college football, ESPN just recently put out the 150 best coaches in college football history. And the guy that you guys just talked about, Eddie Robinson, came in at number five. But he wasn't the only HBCU coach. There were nine in total, including a lot of names that fans will, will know, some of them that they might not. Some of them we had to educate the HBCU expert Jay Walker on yesterday as well. <laughs> oh, man, you, you got me on Skip McCain, okay? You got me on one. that. Everybody else, I can tell you, the school – they did their most damage on and some of their key players. <laughs> Good one, Roddy. You got me. <laughs> Harper incomplete, a little bit high intended for Deshaun Waller. So it'll be fourth down. They'll have to punt. It's interesting. Back to that graphic and some of the luminaries on that list. Eddie Robinson, I was speaking with some guys that have played for him back in the day, and they would tell me how pregame Eddie Robinson would just walk into the room and start speaking with the team on a, a certain theme and a couple minutes later, the whole room would be in tears, and it would be something very heartfelt felt traditionally, and they'd be ready to go out and win and hit some people and win a ball game. You see Doug there, and let's not forget he also had one of the very first African-American quarterbacks in the NFL, and James Shaq Harris mm -hmm. went to Grambling State. Right? Corey Banks back for this punt at the 35. Fair catch called, nothing on the return. A 46-yard punt, first down and 10 for the Aggies. Still trying to get on the scoreboard, the champions of the MEAC. Then, you know, you talk about those names we saw there on that list. So talk about impact they had. So Ace Mumford, Southern University, Coach Harold Carmichael, might have heard of him. Coach wow. Mel Blunt yeah. might have heard of him. Alonzo Jake Gaither, Florida A&M, coaching a guy by the name of Bullet Bob Hayes mm, oh, changed the NFL. Yep. That's what they came up with Sprinter. cover two yeah, for. Yeah. And you got Big John Merritt, Tennessee State, where he coached names like Richard Dent, Ed Too Tall Jones. The list goes on and on. Yeah. So, so Jay, you, you're just trying to show off your knowledge because I got you with uh, <laughs> with, with Skip McCain at Maryland State. <laughs> got that right. <laughs> hey, hey, Jay got his credentials back there, Roddy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, he did. And, and, and the fact that that we that we had this list and Jay really educated us on what these guys have meant to HBCU football and football as a whole was really cool last night in our meeting. Baker in the backfield. Carter going to take off with it. Carter keeps it and picks up the first down. He absorbed a pretty big hit there at the 45 and fell forward to gain eight yards on the play. And this is what Khalil Carter gives this offense. Not there initially, so he's just going to tuck it up and go. Watch the physical. He lowers his shoulder, fights through the contact, and gets the first down. <laughs> Thick build, physical runner, and... A little bit of a different element to this offense this year, Jay. Yeah, and I'm glad I didn't see a yellow flag come out for helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. You know, they've taken away all the hits, but 
Carter runs the ball just as hard as Jermaine Martin when he's in the backfield. They take the jet sweep. Taking a shot downfield. Got him in. Touchdown, Aggies. Bell ringing that bell. Bell with the touchdown reception his seventh of the season guy that broke the school record for touchdown receptions this year and his success continues and gives the Aggies a 73 lead got in behind Burks and it was nothing but end zone after that we'll break it down on the other side of this Kind of feels like the celebration just started. All right, let's take a look at this. Jawan Taylor going to be playing safety, and this is what being able to run the football does. Eyes in the backfield from the safety, and by the time he recognizes pass, Elijah Bell inside release, recognizes pass, it's too late. Elijah Bell is going to run past him, and a perfectly placed football over the shoulder of Elijah Bell for a huge A&T touchdown. This was Morrison on the kickoff return. Had an 89-yard kickoff return against Southern in the SWAC championship. Meanwhile, for more on Elijah Bell, let's go down to Tiffany. Well, guys, you think about Elijah Bell coming out of the state of West Virginia. He played basketball, thought he was going to go to a Division II school until former head coach of ANT, Rod Broadway, saw him playing on a basketball classic on ESPN. He said he only got one offer, and that was from the Aggies. And he's thus turned it into numerous awards, going down as the greatest wide receiver for North Carolina ANT. Yeah, the former MEAC. Rookie of the year, continuing to make an indelible mark on the conference and on the program. We'll see how the Braves counter here. Duffy in the backfield on first and ten. Harper taking a shot, got a man, and overshoots him at the 30-yard line. That was an opportunity. Flag down Offside. on the play. Defense, number eight, five-yard penalty. First down. Where Darius Sanders team can absolutely roll big, long, athletic. Had the defender beat, and Felix Harper wished he could have that one back. Misfires and overshoots his target, Jay. Defense helped him out, but that's what they have to do. They anticipated some double moves because a &T likes to jump on the break so much, so a little stutter go route just off by a little bit. Misconnection on the misfire from Harper. Had a free one, first down and five. Hands it off and a nice crease for Duffy. Duffy with the first down out to midfield at about the 47-yard line. A spirited sprint by the true freshman from Tampa to pick up 16. Well, he's got a slight frame, but he's not afraid to stick it up in between the tackles. Small crease. Watch him just come through right there. Well done. Reading his blocks. Smooth. A nice run. Most productive run on the ground so far for all corn on the ground. We got a timeout on the field. We come back more on some of the prestigious and luminaries in HBCU football. Switch to Boost Mobile and get four lines with unlimited gigs for $25 per line per month, plus four free Samsung Galaxy phones, all on our super reliable, super fast network. Welcome back to the 2019 Celebration Bowl. I'm standing by with the Super Bowl champion and SWAC legend, Doug Williams. We heard earlier about Eddie Robinson and just the type of speeches he gave in the locker room. The guys up in the booth said they would want to go and just play, hit somebody, do whatever. When you heard those speeches, how did it move you? You know, when Coach Rob uh, finished giving you pregame speeches, 
you felt like you could knock down a brick wall and nowhere in the world anybody was going to beat you. That's the mentality that you had when you left that locker room. When you look at a game like this and what it means, what would it have meant to you playing on this stage? For me, this would be big time. You know, we, I mean, we had an opportunity to play on a lot of big stages. But a game like this, a bowl game, meant everything to both teams from, from a championship standpoint. You know, Grambling probably would have been playing this game every year back in the day. So uh, look down on this thing, man. I think about Coach Robinson for a game like this. This will be something that he would dream of. He's looking down, smiling on the celebration bowl today. And I want to get your quick assessment. Yes, you played quarterback, but how do you break down the game so far? It's so much different when I play. You know, looking at these quarterbacks, everything is, is read RPOs, you know, read a run, read read a pass. And when I play, you was either going to drop back to throw it or you was going to hand it somebody to read. And here you just try to get it. Everything is a quick throw here. All right, appreciate it, Doug. Thank you for your time. And, and Jay, what was it like when you played, man? <laughs> we could throw it. <laughs> uh, quarterback position still goes down to, I don't care what you say about RPO running, who can throw it? You have to be able to deliver the ball and throw it. And we've seen a couple nicely thrown balls in this football game here thus far. Hey, Dusty, I like the way Doug said, you know, Grambling would have been in this game every year. <laughs> oh, you caught that? He wasn't afraid to brag Jay, on his squad. Jay bristled a little bit of that one. <laughs> uh, you, you caught that too, huh? Well, those Grambling, those G-men, man. Those G-men, they carry that swag about them, that's for sure. Second and nine. Harper has a lot of time over the middle. Incomplete. Broken up at the 30-yard line. No flag. Good play by Reams, who knocked it away from Anthony. That's excellent coverage down the field. Felix Harper wanted to go to for Darius Anderson, but Mac McCain had him locked up. Let's take a look at Najee Reams. That's Comes early. in a little bit early. That right hand came that's, over a little early. That's two of them. <laughs> Juan Anthony wasn't happy when he got up, and I understand why. Right hand raked over the arm of Anthony, unable to catch the football. Sets up a third down and nine for Alcorn State. Felix Harper took over. In wake of the McNeese State game when Noah Johnson suffered a shoulder injury. He's been the starter ever since. And a great story. But he's missed his last four. Off his back foot, but completes it anyway. And a first down to Anthony Jr. So Felix Harper moves the chains on third down. Well, a t brought pressure. Both backers going to come on a blitz. Probably got away with the hold inside like 75 might have grabbed 41 before he's able to get there but a perfectly thrown ball to Juan Anthony on the out cutting route before he hits the sidelines nice throw on third and long 16 yard gain Waller back in the game in the backfield and Waller takes the handoff nowhere to go let's get back to quarterback Felix Harper and talk about his meteoric rise and surprising ascension Noah Johnson was injured during that McNeese State game and then the real tipping point for Harper came late in the game against Prairie View A&M when he hit Tim McNair Jr. with 40 seconds to play for the game-winning touchdown. That really emboldened him and got him a lot of confidence, didn't it, Jay? Yeah, that was a big start, too. And it's going to be one of those shootout-type games. Prairie View has a high-powered offense. Alcorn was able to match and get the victory at home and launch the field Harper era. Got him. Harper wide open. Room service. Touchdown, Blair. Mac McCain not very happy about that. The aggressiveness of Mac McCain. Watch the double move. Stutter and go. Mac yeah. McCain. Gotcha. Ball up high. Blair, nice, strong hands, brings it in and walks into the end zone. That's the aggressiveness of Mac McCain you talked about. Hit him with that double move for six. Just enough sauce on that move for his seventh touchdown of the season. 36 yards and the Braves retake the lead They call it the celebration bowl for a reason Respect The celebration bowl on ABC is brought to you by capital one What's in your wallet?
and Taco Bell's Rolled Chicken Tacos Party Packs. Well, the players are uh, converting the hotel into a makeshift, well, real-life barbershop. Jay, I was ready to get lined up. Hold on a minute. Did they say escrow? You know how long it's been <laughs> since the escrow came out? <laughs> You're taking me back. They still do escrows, but those lines were tight. When we saw them doing the walkthrough, and I'm going with the tightest fade, oh. the lineup was Nico Duffy. Oh, really? Oh, Nico was tight. Oh, he's tight. looking like it today. Well, guys, I, I want to know what they were talking about in that pop-up barbershop because that's where the magic happens. What's the conversation? True. It had to be about LeBron. I mean, all True. of them. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm thinking about getting some waves after seeing that last shot. Hey, fellas, look, the coaches told them you got to get a fresh cut and a fresh fade before you go on the field because you got to look good and play good. So don't forget that 9-5. to five. They hemmed him up before <laughs> today's game because they said, we need you to look fresh, man. Yeah. See, see, that's something you, you can't relate to that, Dusty. What you talking I mean, about? I mean, hey, a, I had, hey, let me tell you something. Dusty's before, clean. Before, <laughs> before I hit the flight, I went to my man, got cleaned up. Oh, Come keep, on, man. Oh, you keep your hair tight, tight but, but I'm going this way. See, Oklahoma, you know, ABC comes around every day, every week, every other week. Right. Celebration for HBCU, you don't play on national TV every week, so that opportunity you get to shine, you got to look, you look your best. You okay. got to look good. <laughs> Aggies with the ball, down by three. A couple of big plays of late by the respective teams. Carter knocked the wall. Oh, what a circus grab for the first down. They're going to call it a catch by Lockhart. How about the Quin concentration by Quinzel Lockhart? RPO. Carter tries to dump it over the top. Cole makes an excellent play, and the adjustment and concentration to mm. bring that ball in. Outstanding individual effort by Lockhart. And that was good football right there. Give credit oh, to Quinterio catch. Cole not falling for the bait with the little right. fun pass or pop pass. That's a staple of North Carolina A&T. They expected it. He got the deflection, but a great football play by the tight end. Quinzel Lockhart as well made to possibly come down with this catch. Replay officials taking a look at this one. The ruling on the field is a catch. It's a catch. Ooh, he rolled on it the wrong way. Let's see Get if that ball moves as he hits the ground. Is his arm under it? And he rolls yeah. over. I, I think he Ooh. rolled the wrong direction. Had he, he had it, but rolled over and looked like he laid it on the ground. Okay, look, here, this could be the definitive look. We get it from the other angle. He's got it there. That's a... Yeah, his, he's got it wedged between his elbow and his forearm there. Does it move? <laughs> I'm going to say this. Also, you mentioned Cole initially on the deflection, not taking the bait and being in good position, but staying with the play, yes. right? Getting on top of Lockhart because it was him on top of him that forces that ball to jostle out and be on the ground. And possibly be an incomplete he, pass. He, what about the fact that he never gave up on the play, Lockhart? The, had it tipped up in the air and then with great second, even third effort. It's good to bring it in. It's good football, but I don't know, man. I think they're going to overturn this. That ball was on the ground as he was moving. The little bit of movement from the football helped aid him to complete the process of the catch. After review, the ruling is that the receiver did not maintain control of the football. Therefore, it is an incomplete pass. Second down. Really, that's good football all the way around, Jay. It was, you know. and that's what it's about. Great concentration, following your scout and reporting your keys. And as you mentioned, the second effort by Cole to stick with the play, mm -hmm. to disrupt it and have it cause the incompletion. Man, Santa Claus has been in the gym, but he didn't give him a gift on that. <laughs> that's a swole Santa. Yeah. <laughs> I thought Santa's beard was supposed to be long Man. and white. Uh. It's a new age Santa Claus. <laughs> Scare the kids when he comes down the chimney. <laughs> Banks in motion. Give it to Jermaine Martin, whose name we haven't really called as much as we would have thought. A flag down in the field, a gain of eight if it stands. Jermaine Mate Martin, leading Russia coming into the ball game, And uh, there's a look at the big play so far in the ball game by Harper and Carter, the respective quarterbacks. As Tiffany pointed out earlier, both these quarterbacks native to the ATL, back here at home, playing in front of friends and family. Defense number six, five-yard penalty, replay second down. 
What I liked about that last run, though, it's not going to count because they take the yardage. We saw the patience there from John Main and then the physicality lower in the shoulder running through the second level defenders of Alcorn. Maybe that's something that can get him going because mm. that's still the key. Look, Khalil Carter, a nice throw over the top to Elijah Bell. That's great. But I think as this game wears on, Jay, they're going to have to establish the line of scrimmage. They're going to have to get John Main Martin going. Particularly on the edge. That's what they wanted to do. Get the matchup with Martin challenging the secondary defenders from Alcorn State, those second level type runs. Second and five. Martin in the backfield. Takes the handoff. And oh, they don't. Good bit of prestidigitation by Khalil Carter. Kept it himself and ends up picking up four. It'll be third and short. Well, coming up at 530, 230 Pacific on ESPN. We'll have two more bowl games for you. FIU and Arkansas State in the Familia Bowl. And at nine, the Arnell Carriers New Orleans Bowl from the Superdome, number 20. Appalachian State taking on UAB, the Blazers. Both games on ESPN as well as the ESPN app. Hey, man, press the digitation, spell that. I dare you. <laughs> Handiwork, okay. sleight of hand. What I tell you, Jay, <laughs> he's going to hit you with at least three or four of those throughout the day. Yeah, and he defined it, too. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he don't, to he don't mess it. around. He yeah, defined yeah. it. Third and one. Braves load up the box on the third and short. And that's going to be a first down. William Simpson, the fullback. That's our guy, Dusty. I love this dude. 5'11", 290. How Might much? as well be a guard. 290. Re repeat that. 5'11", 290. He can move, though, man. Like, when you watch him get to the second level, lead blocker, he's outstanding. I was watching him yesterday in the walkthrough short yardage situations. They worked on that play. Want to get the big fullback a little bit of run. And William Simpson is an integral part to this outstanding rushing attack of a &T. Nice to know that fullbacks still have a place in this game. All the RPO stuff. First down and 10 from the 41. Ball batted down, incomplete. A little pressure coming off the edge by Javen Morrison. It'll be second down and 10. I, I think he's pulling it. I mean, you've got Simpson in the game. You've got Martin in the game. It's first down. They want to run the football. But I believe that Khalil Carter's pulling it, trying to take that built-in backside slant route, and that's twice we've seen him ineffective on first down. Going to try and throw it again. Got a double move, wide open. The middle of the field, complete. Leslie, touchdown Aggies! Fifty-nine yards. Another double move. We're seeing overly aggressive defense slant and go with Zachary Leslie, who had a huge game a year ago in this same game. A little, little pat it. Wide open as the safety, Quinterio Cole, bites down inside, expecting run. And Fifth. an easy pitch and catch from Carter to Leslie. Fifth touchdown of the season for Leslie. And North Carolina a and retakes the lead. And this is the fifth chapter of the Celebration Bowl. It's 14 to 10. Well, I don't know about prestidigitation, That's but that was a it. heck of a play <laughs> right there for a and We got a bit of a shootout here in Atlanta. <laughs> ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Atlanta is the perfect backdrop for a game of this magnitude in the HBCU community. And these famous Atlantans would be extremely proud wow, that wow, the that fact the... that this game is held in Atlanta. You look at those names and the fact that they went to HBCU schools. Two from Morehouse University, which is just a mile from where we are right now. And then two from your alma mater, Harvard University, Jay. You know... <laughs> Kasim Reed, the former mayor of Atlanta. How about, how about this? They've had three former mayors from Atlanta that graduated from Howard University. So are you trying to tell me they are, do they offer do they offer a course 
at Howard on how to become mayor of Atlanta? Is that, uh, is that mean, how it goes out? <laughs> did, he, and he, did you take that course? Uh, matter of fact, I was a political science major. Poli okay. sci is real. We take it for serious that day. There for you serious. You catch that day? <laughs> Talk about Thurgood Marshall and, you know, Andrew Young was a mayor down here. Shirley Franklin was a mayor. Kasim Reed went to Howard when I was there. Right. So, you know, you talk about the HBCU culture, and then you talk about Andrew Gillum down in Florida who uh, – Maritel Hassan, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, they got some good things up there. Current Atlanta mayors from FAMU. Yes, Shirley uh, uh, Bottoms, Keisha yep. Bottoms. Yep. Keisha yep. Bottoms. Look, Dusty, man, I'm so proud of you, Dusty. <laughs> hey, man, hey, man, hey, where did hey, we get this guy from, man? Got educated <laughs> before I came on the show today. I had to, <laughs> Dusty know? gets a play. He got a play. Oh, right. yeah, that, is, that is all right, man. I'm, I'm proud of you, man. Okay. That. Be ready. Now, Roddy grilled me earlier, so I'm, I'm going to throw a couple oh, questions at hey, you well, later. Well, you don't take it ain't coming at you later, too, now. <laughs> okay. uh, great cultural experience and a great uh, few days here in Atlanta, Roddy. Guys, you talked about the, the, the fact that there's the HBCU culture here. I mentioned Morehouse less than a mile away, but it's sister school, Spelman, one of the most prominent HBCUs in the country as well. Right next to Morehouse, Clark Atlanta have really helped shape the culture of Atlanta, which is what makes this place the perfect place to host the HBCU National Championship. Yeah, great point, Roddy. That pass intended for Anderson. <laughs> Atlanta very symbolic of the New South in so many ways. So many corporate headquarters are located within these city limits and in the surrounding metropolitan area. Uh, Fred McNair right now, he's got to ask, what do I have to do? That's yeah. three times we thought pass interference should have been called. That seemed rather obvious. Yeah. And you see he's lobbying his case on the sideline against the officials. What do we have to do to get a flag in our favor? They're looking at a third down and five. Adam picked off at the 33 by Roberts. A huge turnover. And the Aggies in striking range. Wow, the true freshman steps up and makes a huge play. They've loved what they've seen out of this guy all year long. Watch the vision of the freshman, Jacob Roberts. Zone coverage, reading the quarterback's eyes the entire way, steps in front and takes it inside the five-yard line. Wow. Felix Harper saved the touchdown at the other end. It wasn't that perfect linebacker drop. He was tall. You can tell he was coached. Yes. Drop slant yes. to flat. So drop to the slant, not the curl, to the slant. And the moment Harper threw the ball, he was in trouble. Because that's what they do, right? I mean, that's their bread and butter. <laughs> that quick RPO slant. RPO with that yep. quick slant. Twelfth yep. interception for the Aggies this year. All right, that was a great football play. What a great jump on the ball by Ooh. Jacob Roberts. Just a freshman. They love him. They yes. think he's got a chance to be an outstanding player here at AMT. First and goal from the five. A little Carter keeps it himself. Maybe got a yard on the play. Well, the college football playoff semifinals next Saturday on ABC. Pardon me, on ESPN. And the ESPN app Heisman Trophy winner Joe Burrow. Number one LSU, taking on number four Oklahoma. In the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl at four. Then Ohio State Clemson in the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. The winners play for the national championship Monday, January 13th on ESPN. Who are your picks, guys? I think both games are going to be really close. I think Oklahoma's got a better chance than what people think. I think Clemson's going to get back and compete for another national championship. I, I disagree with you on both of those. Okay. <laughs> Second and goal. Carter into the end zone. Incomplete. Well defended, no flag on the play. Why do you disagree with Dusty? Because I think quarterback play is a key. And I think anytime you got the best quarterback in the country, you mm -hmm. have an opportunity at coming away with a victory. I'm giving Burrow his credit. And also, I think Justin Fields, Ohio State, that okay. semifinal there. Were you trying to say he's better, better than Trevor better. Lawrence? He's played a little bit better this year than Trevor Lawrence. So I'm not, as of late now, uh, maybe this early. This season, yeah, Ooh. on the season. So who's, who's, already the who's already got jewelry? Who's already got jewelry? I'm just saying, <laughs> Trevor Lawrence, don't sleep on him. Yeah. I, I like his weapons yeah. quite a bit, too, outside. Ross and yeah. Higgins. I, I think Clemson. I love Clemson. Love him. I think just they're underrated. Just not as much as you love Ohio State. I, yeah, I'm just going with the, hey, I'm just going hey. with the quarterback play. I want the, I want the best quarterbacks. <laughs> and, and by the way, I mean, look, I think LSU is going in. There's a reason they're a big favorite. Huge play here. Carter up at the line of scrimmage quickly hands it off. Martin with nowhere to go. A lot of resistance. It'll be third down and goal. He was met almost immediately by Jones and company. Let's look at Jones, the true freshman. Heavy set for a and A lot of extra offense alignment in the game. Overload to the left. Jermaine Martin only four touches. He fumbles it. 
Lost the handle all the way back at the nine yard line. And terrible error that time. As the Aggies now look at a fourth and goal, a this loss what, of seven. This is what you want. They bit for it. Yep. Hook, line, and sinker would have had the ball on the perimeter. Might have been a foot race to the pylon. Instead, doesn't field it cleanly. Costly mistake. That's a huge stop for this Alcorn defense. And how about we go back to Felix Harper, not giving up on the play, getting the stop of Roberts inside the five to give his defense a chance, and they pay it off with a huge goal line stand. First team all Mia kicker in, Noel Ruiz. 21 to 25 on the season. This one coming from 26 yards out. And he knocks it through. So the Aggies get three, not six. Coach Sam Washington has his own motivational moments inside the locker room discussing some winning and monetary issues. I'll tell you what, you all have hard of change. Oh, yes, sir. In the heart of a Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Y'all going to understand. Oh, yeah. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah. Coach Washington, he, that's how you get your point across. You discuss the bag, but you talk about the bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, how do you do it? You go into a game in which you're trying to play the game, and we know FCS program. It's not just HBCUs. FCS programs across the board have to go play FBS opponents to get the money. Right. And more often than not, you're supposed to lose. But when you That's the, why they call it a guarantee, right? The guarantee. <laughs> so after getting the victory, he wasn't happy with just the victory. Give me my bag. <laughs> I want that cash. Pay me my money. <laughs> Now his team leading by seven. Let me add on that. Why this game is so special because FCS programs have to play money games. This is a game here where the schools are getting money for a game that you can win. One million dollars right. a piece going to the conferences and the university. Monetary reasons, this is what it's all about. Outstanding for so many different reasons. Recruiting, exposure, applications. That says it all right there. Aggie pride. And we're going to show you a bunch of great band action at halftime as well as we take a look at today's holidays highlights brought to you by Macy's. It's a big explosive plays just recently. A couple of big shots. Dive here to Elijah Bell. Double moves have been big. This is Waller in the ball game in the backfield. Moves the pile for a nice gain. Remember Deshaun Waller was running back number one last year. Been nicked up a little bit this season. He was the SWAC newcomer of the season a year ago. Also from the Atlanta area. Last year had about 20 or 30 people at this game. I remember him telling us. Six yard gain on the play. Handed off again and nowhere to go for Waller. A group of tacklers there, led by Will Jones, number 42. It's going to be interesting to see, guys, how Felix Harper responds after throwing that interception, which led to the subsequent field goal. We see him come out and run the ball twice to start this drive. I think they're trying to settle him down a little bit. And you had him in that SWAC championship game, had three interceptions in that game. In the first half, but then settled down in the second half, found his rhythm, and willed his team to a victory. And, you know, I was wondering how big this stage was going to be. I mean, he's had some great victories there in this season that he's come out of the cloud. But now this is a huge stage. How's he going to respond? Tried to hit his man. It's incomplete at the 45-yard line. That was Pringle. Let's go down to Roddy. Well, you guys mentioned the band action that we're going to get in the Mercedes-Benz halftime. The band behind me, North Carolina A&T's band, is the number one rated band by the undefeated. So Say the what? number one band in the country wow. on display. And we will air it. We will air both bands equally for everybody out there who thinks that we're not going to air both, best, both bands. But we've got the number one. Tiff, what do you think about that ranking? I strongly disagree. We know that the incomparable Marching 100 from Florida A&M University should be in that conversation. I think the sonic boom of the South from Jackson State, Southern University's band, Bethune-Cookman as well. There are a lot that could buy for that top spot. Jay? 
Tiff, Florida A&M is not even the number one band in the state of Florida. Stop oh, tripping. That's Stop cool. tripping, Man. Jay. With the marching, one, the marching Wildcats get it done. They get it done. Ranked a little bit higher. I'm sure they're going to be ranked higher than Florida A&M. Yeah, I've got Bethune Cookman as my number one band in the country, followed by Southern. I mean, by Jackson State and then Southern. I think it's invoice. The sonic boom of the South can really do it down to Jackson State, and then Tennessee State. The marching aristocrats. Ooh. <laughs> like those names. That, that would be your favorite band right yes. there. You like that name. Yeah. Well, guys, I had, little, a chance bougie, catch, you know. I had a chance to catch up with Kenneth Rupp, the band director for North Carolina A&T, before the game. And he said he was actually surprised by the number one waking <laughs> because they've been around for all year. That pass I mean, I'm all, I've always said this. North Carolina A&T is one of the most improved bands I've seen okay. in the past five years. They've gotten very good in a hurry. Okay, we're not talking about most improved rankings. We're talking about number one rankings. Yeah, okay? and I told you, I strongly disagree, <laughs> and, and Tiffany, Tiffany disagreed with me. Well, we yeah. understand that. Yeah, they and that's going to cause a lot of controversy. I promise you that's going to go on Twitter and well, Instagram. Well, Jay, the, the other thing that Kenneth Rupp told me that, that he wanted me to mention, they've done it with one of the smallest scholarship budgets in the entire country. So per capita, they might be the best. Mm. Looking for another angle. I like that, Roddy. This is John Main Martin picking up about three yards on the play, closer to four as the band starts to get into formation, getting ready for the halftime show. Third down coming up. Aggies with a seven-point lead. Trying to go for their third consecutive Celebration Bowl championship. I can't speak to all the bands. What I can tell you is I'm going to stick around at halftime, yes. and I will rank these two right here okay. when we start the second half. Okay, okay, because I'm not going to, so I'll let you do that. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> I've got to see these folks on a regular basis. <laughs> on third and seven, little pump fake. Got a man open. Caught. At about the 30-yard line, Corey Banks. Boy, Kyla Carter really laid it right in there, guys. Well, it starts with the protection. We always forget about this. Look at this. The time Khalil Carter has to sit there. Gives a little pat on it, a little pump and go. Wheel right on the outside. And Banks outruns. Torrance Wilson on the sidelines. And a well-placed ball by Khalil Carter once again. He came in as the, more of the runner. But here today, hit some nice shots down the field. They're throwing the deep ball, the explosive ball. That's what's been lacking from them sometimes when they struggle offensively. But today, the wide receivers are getting the job done. Corey Banks, Elijah Bell, Zachary Leslie, wide receiver, of course, stepping up. And that one going for 31 yards. Control again, the receiver screen incomplete. In and out of the arms of Zachary Leslie. And he had a bevy of blockers out in front of him. That's a walk-in touchdown, perfectly set up. Jailbreak screen. You see Pettiford get out there. Oh, look at all look at those entourage. linemen. <laughs> oh. They're going to walk him into the end zone. It was set up so perfectly, and Leslie took off <laughs> running with the football before it actually caught it. Secure the football. They had four offensive linemen mm -hmm. leading the entourage down there with Marcus Pettiford, their best offensive lineman, the left tackle, seven yards down the field, ready to escort him into the end zone. Second and ten. Carter hands it off to Martin again. Martin stopped up after a gain of a couple yards by Damian Martin. What surprises you most about the, I don't know, do we call it a lack of productivity by Martin? Uh, I think the lack of attempts and tries. Okay. I thought going close to halftime that he would have at least 12, 13 carries because he gets stronger as the game goes on and they haven't been willing to instill their will at the line of scrimmage and force feed the running game. Seven carries so far for Jamain Martin here in this first half. For just one yard. And we got a flag thrown. That's going to go against the Aggies. Keys and Simpson both jumped. False start. Offense number 79. Five yard penalty. Third down. Martin has been the guy that has been product very productive for them. This is what we're used to seeing. Leads FCS almost eight yards per rush. But unable to break loose here this afternoon. 299 yards rushing in a non-conference game versus Charleston Southern. Really put him on the map early in the season. At six 100-yard rushing games on the year. Carter with tons of time. And lobs it up downfield. 
incomplete. Good coverage in the secondary and a flag thrown at about the 12 yard line. Alcorn secondary pleading their case. Pass interference. Defense, number 20. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. It's going to go against Dallin Bruce. Khalil Carter takes a shot as he delivers the ball. It's a clean hit on the quarterback. We've seen several yeah. missed pass interference yeah, man, so far man, today. Man, it's not clean when a guy launches at the quarterback, Dust. He, he launched at him. It should have been a flag. You don't leave your feet to launch helmet first. We're spoken, defenseless players. Spoken like a true quarterback. <laughs> yes, wow. yes. Sure sound like one, Dusty. You're right. Carter into the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Corey Banks. 117 to go in the first half. You know what Alcorn's going to be talking about, the, the, the fans, the, the viewers that are watching, the pass interference calls. Mm. It has yeah. not been called equally, right. I don't believe. Three of them we saw that were pretty obvious that North Carolina A&T got away with, and then Alcorn didn't get away with one there, which I don't even think was a catchable pass. Correct. Fred McNair not very happy right now. Aggies with 3-0 and in the celebration bowl. 2-0 and against Alcorn State. Set up a little screen here. Martin with an opportunity. Hit the turbo button and picked up the first down inside the five. Finally brought down by Cole. When it's like you've been saying, Jay, get Martin the football on the perimeter. So it's a screen back to the far sideline. Decent blocking out in front. But you see John Main Martin running through arm tackles and efforting his way inside the five. 16-yard gain, first and goal. Remember the previous four versions of this game. The final margin of defeat total was 15 points. Carter. Touchdown, Banks! When we came in talking about Jamaine Martin, but it's Khalil Carter back in his backyard. Fifth year grad transfer, wait a long time to have this opportunity, and boy, is he making the most of it. His third touchdown pass in the first half, and how about the offensive line, Jay? Giving yes. him plenty of time to survey the field, allow Banks to come open. It's good football right there from A&T. You have that much time in the protection, you can do some damage as a quarterback. Well, you can only cover for so long in a defensive end. I mean, think about it. This is down in the red zone. Yeah. Things are supposed to happen quicker in the red zone. He still has plenty of time to go through his progressions. I mean, take a look at this. Normally, the ball has to be gone, but look at him go through his first read, secondary read, comes all the way back across the field to his third read. That's a great job by the offensive line of North Carolina A&T. And you see, John Main Martin stays in, picks up the blitzer. So it's yep. the offensive line. It's the running back, the protection, so key. For, Lil, for Khalil Carter here in this first half. For Corey Banks, guys, that's his third touchdown catch of the season. Capping an eight-play, 64-yard drive, using up just a little bit under three minutes on the clock. And the Aggies now with the bigger lead, 24-10. Fans warming up. Getting ready for halftime. They heard you, Jay. They heard what you and Tiffany <laughs> yeah. were saying about him. They said, all right, we're going to show those yeah. guys. We're the, going to show them. They're ready to bring you some smoke, That's Jay. right. The football team is proving that they could be the number one HBCU in the country. At halftime, we're going to give the band an opportunity to prove <laughs> they deserve that number one ranking. Like that the undefeated gave them. <laughs> 24 to 10. Remember last year, Alcorn State led by double digits at halftime. But A&T came back and won the game, so plenty of football left. These games have historically gone down to the last couple of possessions. And one thing I'll say about, I call them the boys from Mississippi down, they didn't come off the reservation to come here and give up. Mm. They show plenty of fight. They've been in some battles, and their heart is never to be questioned. They're going to fight their way back in this football game. Boy, that was almost dangerously intercepted by 
Better stop Mac playing. McCain to third. <laughs> Just because you got Mac McCain once, I, I wouldn't <laughs> test him out too many more times. Well, we've seen the ball come out quick uh, several times so far from Felix, but that ball kind of came out as like a slow wind up there from Felix Harper. And as we've seen, Mac McCain plant and drive, jumping the route. That would have been disastrous to close out the half. 38 seconds to go. Harper going to hand it off this time into the boundary. Nowhere to go for Nico Duffy, the true freshman. Third down coming up for the Braves. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And we got a lot of linen down on the field. There was a shove there by Kai and Howard, number 54, the starting middle linebacker for North Carolina A&T. There were two fouls on the play, both dead ball fouls, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 81 on the offense, unsportsmanlike conduct, 24. number 24 on the defense. Those fouls cancel, third down. Just That's number 81 at. and 34s, 24s, first unconduct, unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. I guess you could throw a flag on that <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where Darius Anderson did wrong uh, yeah, he, exactly. was blocking. he was blocking they kind of they were at a stalemate and I thought when Amir McNeil did the swipe well, he got up in his end. face mask and wouldn't let it down but I don't think Anderson had done much by the way Devin Harrell's had a heck of a first half as he made that last play and makes this play on third down he I'm gonna yeah. tell you what makes man stop on Duffy coming off the edge that speed that's really hurt Alcorn so far in this first half dealing with the speed off the edge and the power inside from this A&T front. Two quarters in the books. Seen some explosive football. We've talked about the fraternity and sorority and Greek life. Now you're going to really get some smoke. The band's coming up. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching the Mercedes-Benz Halftime Report. Welcome back, everyone, to the Mercedes-Benz Halftime Report from Mercedes-Benz Stadium. The Yankees leading the Braves 24-10 as we take a look at some top games to watch with our Capital One Bowl Mania update. And in the Makers wanted Bahamas Bowl last night, Buffalo surprisingly defeated Charlotte. 31 to 9, surprisingly easy in that game. And boy, what a shootout in the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl. Kent State defeating Utah State 51 41 in a shootout. Hey, folks, third quarter coming up. And it, during the second half, remember, Jay is going to take us through the decade as we close out this present one. Switch to Boost Mobile and get four lines with unlimited gigs for $25 per line per month, plus four free Samsung Galaxy phones, all on our super reliable, super fast network. Welcome back to Capital One Bowl Mania. You're watching the 2019 Celebration Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania from Atlanta, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Back for the start of the third quarter, North Carolina a t with a two-touchdown lead and possession of the football as we get ready for the third quarter of play after the kick it'll be first down and 10 here from the 25 yard line for the Aggies who pulled away a little bit late in the first half and Khalil Carter doing a great job a masterful job at quarterback first and 10 Carter hands it off to Martin John Main Martin that's what we expected Martin in the clear and stepping out Showtime! Gone! Keep on going! He hit the home run. His 22nd rushing touchdown of the season. 74 to George Simpson's going to pull around, going to be the lead blocker, key block on Cole, 
and then it's all Jermaine Martin. Speed to the sidelines as he takes it to the house to open the second half with an explosion. Wow. What a statement by the Aggies offensively on the very first play, the very first touch of the second half. John Maine Martin said it is an honor to fill the shoes of guys like Tariq Cohen and to be able to break his single season touchdown record makes him so humble. Grateful for the second chance that North Carolina a and has given him. And he says, you know what? I only hope to further the legacy and tradition from that running back position. He says he talks to Tariq Cohen all the time. He says he gives him words of encouragement, say, man, you can do this. Tariq Cohen, one of the greats right now with the Chicago Bears and when you look at Martin a young man that like many teenagers do early in their careers as an 18 year old made some questionable decisions with some of the people he was with went through an unfortunate time but has really turned things around from his time at Coastal Carolina. He could have gone to a number of schools there but choosing to go to an HBCU to be surrounded with more of your peers in this case I think the HBCU experience helps him out and he'll leave an Aggie man. What I like is Life's about making the most out of a second opportunity. He's done that and some. A guy that his teammates absolutely love. And what a season he has put together here at an exclamation point to start this second half in the national championship game. As we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary, some of the cogent numbers to this point. Alcorn State down three touchdowns now. Carter really doing a great job at quarterback three touchdown passes that ties his career high and North Carolina a and with that big run a moment ago adding to their total on the ground they were expected to run it and run it down the Braves throats well they force fed them from Martin in a big way Martin with seven runs in the first half only gained one yard he got a lot more than that on the last one Boy, they keep sitting on Felix Harper's passes. That one broken up by McNeil. Did, did, you, did you see the wide open receiver he missed? I don't know if Felix Harper's seeing things right now. That same double slant combination, mm -hmm. LaPringle, his go-to target was open, didn't go there with the football, threw it late to the outside. He looked at him, but he was worried. I think he's nervous about those backers <laughs> jumping the route as they did earlier. And... Maybe seeing a little bit of ghosts out there here to start this second half. Good point. Harper got one-on-one -on -one coverage and incomplete at the 45-yard line. Jay, I want to ask you, you've seen this team, Alcorn State, throughout the entire season, beginning, middle, and end. Have you seen them in this kind of deficit before, and how do they make it back? Not down by 21, saw them down by 14 to a very talented, offensive-minded team in Prairie View A&M. That was Felix Harper's first start of the season there and he responded and put a lot of points on the board that prairie view defense is not this north carolina a t mm. defense so the task becomes that much tougher but i think ultimately what you're going to need he's going to need some help right now they put a lot on his plate somebody has to step up whether it's in the running game or wide receiver bubble screen and make a big play to get him back in this game he's missed 10 of his last 13 completes this one wide open to pringle in the middle of the field working that middle area and it makes it out to the 46 to move the chains they got to work quickly here a 21 yard game and that was a throw i said he missed earlier when they called it on yep. first down same route they came back to a give credit to the offensive coordinator Adden, trying to settle down his junior quarterback down by 21. nice route there by the charles pringle work in the middle of the field he beats mosley who's working as the nickel back and well-timed throw there much needed from felix harper Harper completes another one at the 46-yard line to Anderson this time. Anderson picks up eight yards. It'll be second down and two. Remember, if you were just joining us, Felix Harper took over from Noah Johnson in wake of the McNeese State game, has been the starter ever since, and has done a very good job at quarterback for Alcorn State. Young man that originally was committed to Army before flipping and choosing the Braves. A little bit of contact down the sidelines, and Coach McNair is going to be upset. He does get his flag. Mac McCain defending Anderson. 
A lot of bit of contact there. Not a little bit. <laughs> Double move again to Mac McCain. That's smart, though, by Mac McCain, because if he doesn't do that, that's likely a touchdown down the sidelines to the speed to Radarius Anderson. If you fall for the move as a defensive back, they tell you, give up the penalty, don't give up yep. the touchdown. Good reaction. He bit on this double move. Holding defense number 29 on an eligible receiver doing a legal forward pass play. 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. Mm. That's a good penalty, though, I got to say. I mean, Because that was a touchdown. Eight. If he doesn't grab him. No doubt. If you bite hook, line, and sinker, then you have to grab him, take the penalty. We talked with offensive coordinator Elliot Ratton this week, and one thing that stuck out to me when talking about Felix Harper was his calmness. And I would say if you're looking for a quarterback to lead you back in this spot, it's got to be somebody with a cool, calm demeanor. You talked about the Prairie View A&M game. His first start, he leads him down under a minute with a touchdown drive. We'll see how he responds here. Nice burst of speed by Deshaun Waller. Picked up about 70 yards on the play. Yes. Nice looking drive here from yes. Alcorn State. They, they've got some tempo. They sped up the tempo a little bit, but they're not rushed. They know it's up-tempo offense. They realize they're down by 21, and they're moving the ball down the field. Waller third in rushing a season ago in the SWAC. Mentioned some of the injuries he's had to endure this year, not quite himself. On second and three. Harper gets it out. Incomplete. His receiver... Blair took his eyes off. It started running before he made the catch, and it'll be third and three. He's got to look that ball in. You're exactly right. Well said by you, Jonesy. I mean, he's wide open, and he's running. Ball was thrown slightly behind him, but if he stays with the football, it should be an easy catch and has room in front to get up to have enough for a first down. And as Chris Blair just pointed, that's on me. My bad. That's my fault. <laughs> that's a universal sign for my bad, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that had a 21-yard touchdown reception. Previous game, after the average 21 per game. And this could be a big flag one. on the field. Snap infraction, offense number 77, five yard penalty, third down. Well, Fred McNair said in our meeting with him earlier this week that we left some plays on the field last year. He said, we pretty much have to play a perfect game to win, and I believe that we can do it. Still plenty of time, but how important is a score on this drive? They have to put some points on the board. You're down by three scores. A touchdown would be very helpful here. Three points with a chip at it, but not enough. Harper, boy, he fitted into a tight window to Blair. Impressive-looking throw by Felix Harper on that one. Picked up nine in a first down. Eyes on the football there. Chris Blair was not going to fail his quarterback twice in a row nice job with protection see harper climb in the pocket come back good route good football and a big first down for all court handed off down to the 20 yard line that's waller again waller had 167 yards on the ground last year in this game picks up four right there Native of Atlanta, Georgia. Combination of the up-tempo to start the drive with some good runs. Now we're starting to see North Carolina A&T defensive linemen hands on their hips mm -hmm. a little bit. This drive mm -hmm. taking them down the field, taking its toll. Ninth play of the drive. Nico Duffy and now a tailback beside quarterback Felix Harper. Harper. Complete. Down to the five-yard line, a good-looking catch by his leading receiver, LaCharles Pringle, working against Stuckey. 15-yard gain, another first down. Excellent hands by LaCharles Pringle as he high-points the football, mm. brings it in on contact, and secures the catch through the ground. Harper taking off, touchdown! Felix Harper takes out his do-it-yourself kit. The block on the perimeter by the receiver, Darius Anderson, was fantastic. Helped secure this play. Zone read, defensive end came in. Look right here. Look at that. I mean, just holds his man at the point. Mm. Even turns him out and allows Felix Harper to walk in the end zone. That's a huge touchdown drive that Alcorn had to have 
in response to that big play from John May Martin. That was a pretty quick response, too, and that extra point just inside that right upright, capping a 10-play, 75-yard drive, eclipsing 3-10 on the clock. Some key plays by Harper, and he got a little bit of help from his friends on the outside. Two million. Wow. What do you have to say to them? This is TikTok. I say thank you. Early in the third quarter, 31-17, A&T on top. But Felix Harper called his number on that last play. And what's in a number for him? Well, it means so much more, given the fact that number two, he wears it for his fallen high school teammate, DeAndre Terman, who broke his neck and then later died on the football field. He said he was the motivating factor, the reason, the purpose, why he continues to play football. On the other side, for John Main Martin, he wears number 30 because of his fallen cousin, Mark Wayne Bellamy, who died of cancer. Again, a motivating factor in why he's been able to excel from the running back position. Yeah, Tiff, certainly both those guys playing inspired football on their last respective drives, really showing well for themselves and their teams. And when the last time Martin touched the ball, he took it to the house. Did you notice in that picture on the sidelines of Felix Harper, who was talking to him? That quarterback coach, Pat White, who's done a fantastic job working with Felix Harper, talked to Felix yesterday, talking to him about the role that Pat White has played in getting him prepared each and every week. There's a look at Pat White right there, former draft pick of the Miami Dolphins. Had a prolific career at West Virginia. Playing for Rick Rodriguez, there he goes again. Martin is finding a lot of creases and seams up front. And another first down picks up 16 that time. Big hole off the right side once again. The A&T offensive line starting to do work. Get up to the next level, secure it. Big hole opens up, and Jamain Martin hits the speed burst through the hole for another nice pickup to start this second half. That's a bad sign for Alcorn if Jamain Martin gets going because now the pass game's going to open up too. And it looks like he's getting into his rhythm. Carter throws it away down the sidelines, well covered. In the secondary by Dalen Burks. Well, coming up next on ABC, we'll have two more bowl games for you. SMU battling FAU in the Cherubundi Boca Raton Bowl. And at 7.30, Chris Peterson coaching his final game for Washington against his former team, number 19, Boise State, in the Mitsubishi Motors Las Vegas Bowl. In his last game, and disappointing season this year, I'm sure, for the... Huskies always with high expectations. Here's Martin again. Put his foot in the ground and hit the Braves with that sauce. Wow. Picked up 17. Wow. This is just an outstanding individual effort. I want you to watch the cutback here for John Main Martin. Going to be his own. He sees it. Cut back here. Okay. He's not going to be done with the cutback. He's going to give a whoop. Make Cole miss in the hole. Wow. Vision. The ability to make. A safety miss in the hole. Wow, what a start to the second half. For as you said earlier in the week, possibly the most talented player in the HBCU. Oh, no question. One of the best in FCS football in the hole in general. He's that talented. You're seeing some of these runs like this where the opposing team are like, oh, I played against Jarmaine Martin. That guy's the truth. <laughs> Off the play action, taking a shot downfield. Carter open. Touchdown. He dropped a dime, 43 yards to Ron Hunt. That's what I was saying. Once they get John May Martin going, it's going to open up the early down throw game. Now that defense of Alcorn is going to be more committed. Down low, protection is outstanding once again. And Rodarius Anderson had some drops earlier this season. Didn't drop that one. Another dime delivered by Khalil Carter. My apologies. Ron Hunt, yep. who's been hurt all year, catches a touchdown. And that is a career high in touchdown passes for the senior, Khalil Carter. At just the right time, Jay. If you have to say somebody deserves it, it's Khalil Carter. Being a part of this program for some crucial victories here on his biggest stage as a starting quarterback, Khalil Carter having a quarterback's dream, four touchdowns and some nice dimes here in this contest. 
T-Mobile and get four lines with unlimited gigs for $25 per line per month, plus four free Samsung Galaxy phones, all on our super reliable, super fast network. The Celebration Bowl on ABC is brought to you by McDonald's. Well, both conference champions were welcome to the Atlanta College Football Hall of Fame. The guys had a great time hanging out, both A&T and Alcorn State. I'm telling you, there was a lot of drip on display. The guys came through dripping in a big way and had a lot of fun. Jay, I know you were there. It's all part of the great festivities and some of the great happenings that these teams have and a lot of fun to be had before the game. It, it's a true bowl of fear. I mean, this is not just they put together a game like a classic like you have during the year. This is first-class run organization. It's starting to become the go-to event in the HBCU football culture. I get a little jealous. I wish they, I'm like Doug Williams. Why didn't you have this out when I was playing? All right. 38 to 17. Aggies back up by three touchdowns. A little over 10 minutes to go here in the third quarter. This has been a high scoring period so far. And the Braves will take it first and 10 from the 25 yard line. Dusty, what was the key on this last play? As the Aggies continue to get their rhythm off. Well, it's the running game that set everything up. Watch. I mean, you're going to see the safety come all the way down. And what I love, you're going to have Ron Hunt out here. He's just going to run a deep post, and there's nobody there in the middle of the field. This is easy football. Safety's flying downhill with the play fake. He's, oh, man, what did I do? And you got Ron Hunt, who's been waiting for this moment all year, has been injured all year. He's going to go ahead and redshirt the senior wide open in the back of the end zone. And Khalil Carter, he has been on point with the deep passes so far here today. Throwing dimes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's throwing accurate balls. The deep ball really been effective. That's what's been impressive. He's not taking the nickel and dime throws. They've been going with the vertical passing game for big chunks. David Sarper looking at first and 10. And he takes a shot. Got his man. Great catch <laughs> by Blair. And an instant response, and looks like Mac McCain was a little shaken up on the play, as is Blair. Boy, Chris Blair, a really tall, imposing, impressive-looking wideout. You said something about dimes? That was one. Walk me through this, Skywalker. How about that throw? Look at the touch, the accuracy. Only one person was going to have a chance at making that catch, and that was Chris Blair. And that's one of those good old-fashioned throws. Run down the field 30 yards, and then when you get to 35 yards, look in your right pocket, and I'm going to put the football there. Nice touch by Felix Harper. Remember, it was Blair last year that had the opportunity and couldn't quite get his feet down and hang onto the ball in the end zone late in the game against the Aggies. A touchdown that was disallowed that would have swung it in favor of the Braves as Mac McCain, the third, coming off the field. That's He's one of the best loss. DBs. Yeah. That's a big loss for that secondary. Chris Mosley going to be inserted, fifth year senior. Test him. Did you go <laughs> after him right away? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> we both couldn't rush. Wow. You have to. A little barbecue chicken out there, perhaps. But Harper comes underneath. First down, catch and run by Anderson. The Aggies trying to take a step closer to the dynastic existence. With a win on the field here today, the largest already HBCU in the nation. Over 12,000 enrolled. Jesse Jackson, Al Adels, one of the greats of all time, presently with the Golden State Warriors. Fantastic Hooper back in the day. First down and 10. Harper hands it off, a gaping hole, and he will waltz in. Waller with the waltz, and they're not done yet. 23 yards. But when he's healthy, Deshaun Waller, he is the best back on this football team. And he looks good so far. This jump cut here is just fantastic. Starts to his left, jump cut back to the right. Nice hole opens up, and he strolls in the end zone. Fireworks here in the second half. Four touchdowns in the first six minutes. Told so much for defense. I told y'all them boys from Mississippi weren't giving up now. No. They're going to fight no. you now. Three plays on the drive, and they get it right back to make it a 14-point game. But you know what? 
Carter, you got a little something for him after this. Super reliable, super fast network. Let's take a look at who's bringing the flavor today. Brought to you by McDonald's. The bands have done an excellent job entertaining here at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. A lot of different rhythms and vibes, all part of the Celebration Bowl. The fifth edition in a great game. This third quarter really heating up. Roddy, what do you got for us? Well, Mark, we've seen big plays on the field, but how about making big plays off the field as well? We got a proposal here at the Celebration Bowl as well, and it was one of the brothers of Phi Beta Sigma fraternity proposing to a sister of Delta Sigma Theta sorority. And look, that's the combination that my mom and dad were. My dad's a Sigma, mom's a Delta, so I can attest that produces some pretty stellar offspring. <laughs> that's just like biased. your opinion, right? He's a little biased. <laughs> that's cool, man. Uh, Glad she said yes. Yes. In front of a very healthy crowd here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. That's a lot of pressure. Eight minutes to go in the third quarter. John Main Martin put his hat down and makes it out to the 38-yard line. He had a 75-yard touchdown run to start the third quarter. Brought down that time by Kinsler. Take a look at this block. You're going to see come through here at ISO on a linebacker. 46, William Simpson. Uh, get out the club there. Wow. We talked about him earlier. 5'11", 290. We give John Maine Martin so much credit. This O-line and the fullback do an outstanding job as well. Carter pulls it out this time. The pass incomplete. Intended for Bell. He's working against Wilson. And third down and four coming up. And Will North. Simpson, the fullback, one of my favorite players to watch. Because mm -hmm. every play he's initiating contact. Mm -hmm. Whether it's in the blocking game, the lead block game, we saw him get a carry. Fun to watch, and he's elected the captain of the running back core. That tells you about the leadership qualities that he has and how much he loves the game of football. Huge play here for Alcorn's defense. If they can get a stop and get the ball back to Felix Harper, would be huge. How about a turnover? They lead the country in turnovers on the season. Good time for one now. About that time, Carter back to pass. Completes it to Lockhart. Lockhart gave him a little stutter step, hit him with the hezzy. And makes it out for the first down. They move the chains. Denzel Lockhart with a clutch catch and run that time. Picks that, up 14. That's great play design. Corey Banks, the far receiver. It's just a, it's a play set up for the underneath crosser. Lockhart coming all the way across the field. They've got Jamain Martin over there securing the edge. Also, Corey Banks perfectly executed on a third medium situation. Nice play call by the offensive coordinator, Chris Barnett. Boy, what a day that guy has had. Number 10, Corey. Khalil Carter. Wasn't able to play in this game last year. A result of a broken leg. Martin. Going to be stopped up at about the 46-yard line. Well, kickoff week 16 with a special Sunday NFL countdown from Philadelphia. Head of the big Cowboys-Eagles matchup with the NFC title on the line for Dallas. Chris Berman will have... Exclusive interview with Patrick Mahomes, plus they have all the early breaking stories, updates, preview each game right up to kickoff. Sunday NFL countdown from outside the link. 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. And sure, we might be talking about this guy. And you see uh, John Maine Martin having a reversal, as it's medically called sometimes. Carter keeps it himself and pushed out of bounds. At the 35-yard line, John Main Martin was sick, obviously, there on the sidelines. As, uh, we saw him vomiting. You ever do that on the field before, Dust? Yes. Oh, what? Quite a bit. Oh, wow. Are well, you a quarterback? You be on that or something? Uh, no, yeah. No, we have to keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> Time yeah. out. No, uh, never. All State. Is that because of nerves? Is it because? Yes. Really? Okay. Tell you what, if I'm the defense, I'm nervous when it comes to John Main Martin. But, Jay, he's obviously one of the better players in HBCU football. What about as we close out this decade, some of the, who are some of the great names that are indelible in your mind? Well, 
nicknames make you stick. And when you're really right. good at HBC football, you have a nickname. I was Skywalker. You know that, Skywalker. right? That was pretty good, right? But Gary Big Hands Johnson, my godfather, James Shaq Harris, who's the godfather of all modern-day uh, 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 black college quarterbacks, right. Ernie Big Cat Lad, Too Tall Jones, Hollywood Henderson, and Rich Tombstone Jack. And now, my favorite one is Eldridge Dickey. That's the best nickname of all time, the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. They say when he That's got to unique, Tennessee State, man. they say our prayers have been answered. <laughs> Whose prayer? The Lord's Prayer. <laughs> well, I like Skywalker. Good. What about Air McNair? <laughs> Air's a good oh. one, but it's like you've got to be a little bit more creative. Sky oh, yeah. didn't make the list. Yeah. Sky was too simple. Sky didn't make the list. Yeah. Air can't make the list. Great nickname. Incomplete. The Lord's Prayer is just on another level. I'm <laughs> sorry. Level. Literally on another level. And then you know people, they talk in, you, they talk in history about them. Are you talking about prayer? And then Lord's Prayer, seriously. John Merritt, Big John Merritt was a head football coach at Tennessee State. The team would ride in the bus. Big John and prayer would ride together in a Cadillac. Oh. Wow. See, that's, real, that's philosophy. I'm that's, not joking. That's real floss right there. <laughs> Carter going to keep it himself on a predetermined run. Got enough for the first down right at the marker. Let's see what kind of spot he gets. But the grad student is going to be marked just a little bit shy. With about six and a half minutes to go. But a great run here. Check out Kashawn Baker going to ISO. It's just a quarterback lead draw. Watch Baker get up on the second level, secure the block on the linebacker. Nice run there by Khalil Carter. And they pick up the first down on the subsequent play, going quickly here, leading by 14 points. You know, back to that graphic, Ernie Big Cat Lad, that was my favorite. You like the wrestler? I, I, I remember him as a wrestler and his finishing moves. Went on to a very successful wrestling career. And it looks like we have a backup quarterback situation now. Kingsley Ifidi coming in. He's going to run it. Bring him in there almost like a wildcat. Packing. Martin on the sideline, sitting this one out. There he is. Ifidi. Brought down by Solomon Muhammad. Three-yard gain on the play. And uh, Martin looking like he's ready to come back on the field any moment. Purging himself of perhaps whatever it was that was bothering him a moment ago. Second down and seven from the 20-yard line. Tenth play of the drive coming up for the Aggies. We've said it time and time again. Alcorn State desperately needs to stop. Needs to stop North Carolina A&T from expanding that lead. At this point, you just want to limit it to a field goal attempt. High snap. Carter making a play out of it. Touchdown, Magic Man Khalil. Bell with the catch. Another touchdown toss for Khalil Carter, his fifth of the day. And everything that this guy touches this afternoon is turning to gold. What an afternoon for Khalil Carter. Back at home. Told me yesterday when I talked to him at the walkthrough, he's going to have 15 to 20 family members and friends here. Says that his family can't go out to North Carolina A&T. They can't make it out there to watch him. This is one of the few spots that they can come watch him, and he is putting on a show here this afternoon. 45 points on the board. Second touchdown reception for Bell. Already the school record holder for touchdown receptions. And... <laughs> I tell you what, it might be time to sing Alcorn State a lullaby. Well, we've been giving the offensive line a lot of credit. This time, it is all, it's all Khalil Carter. There's going to be pressure coming off the edge, untouched. And just Carter making a play. Then he calls out to Elijah Bell, go to the corner, run away from the coverage. Elijah Bell playing his last game in an A&T uniform, gets to the open area, and Khalil Carter... Puts it right where it needs to be. That's an outstanding individual effort. And, and that's, Quint that's Quinterio Cole, number 32, an all-swack performer for Alcorn State in the secondary. Missing the opportunity for a tackle for a loss in the backfield. A good offense is going to make you pay. And the Aggies increase their lead. Carter played in this game as a freshman just a little bit. A couple of snaps, the same in his sophomore. But really making a mark here as a senior.
Packers, all four state, you know what you have to say? We just have to keep scoring. Sooner or later, we hope the defense can make a stop. Offensively, they have to try and keep up with the Aggies, which is tough. They got a long way to go right now, though. An interesting selfie story from Darius Leonard. What's up? This is Darius Maniac Leonard. I'm the linebacker for the Indianapolis Colts. I graduated from the South Carolina State University. I would like to wish North Carolina a &T the best of luck in the MIAC versus SWAT game. And you already know who I'm rocking with. MIAC over everything. Come on, A&T. Bring this thing on back to the MIAC where it belongs. Wow, so he's 10 toes down with the MIAC. And, Jay, just how significant is it for him to turn like that? and root for a rival. Well, it's all about conference. I always rank it. It's, it's your school, then it's your conference, then it's HBCU love. And these are some of the guys that are in the NFL right now. And three of those from, you see two from North Carolina A&T. South Carolina State, by the way, has the most current NFL players. They've got five guys playing mm -hmm. in the NFL. But Tariq Cohen, obviously the offensive standout. How about this? Watching Teron Armstead start the left tackle. We heard from him earlier. Everybody thinks the Saints may make it to the Super Bowl. Well, Armstead's going to have to play well. Harper under duress. Found his man downfield. Blair still on his feet. And all the way down to the 35. They get a bunch of it back. Nice reception by Chris Blair, who's been one of his popular targets. Picks up 37, and he's limping off the field. There was good edge pressure there. Looked like Jermaine McDaniel beats his man. Outstanding job by Felix Harper climbing in the pocket and finding his open target. He's going to stay out there. Harper taking a shot in the end zone. Contact. Caught. Touchdown, Anderson. Back at you. The Braves hanging around. That's the fourth touchdown catch of the season for Anderson. And the Braves get that score back in just three plays. They move it 75 yards, used up just a minute, 07 on the clock. Got him behind Mac McCain to third. And the lead back down to a very reasonable, very manageable, very plausible 14 points. Uh, keep in mind that the last four games of the Celebration Bowl have been decided by a total of 15 points. So you got to figure this is coming down to the end. Absolutely, and I like what Allcorn's done in spite of what the score says. Offensively, they just have to keep scoring, mm -hmm. keep scoring. They've done their job. When will the defense for Allcorn show up in the second half? I've been impressed with Felix Harper. We've talked so much about Khalil Carter today. How about Felix Harper? What he's done all season and being down being calm, collected, and continuing to make plays down the field. One thing Sam Washington told us during the week, they were worried about his ability to extend plays, back-to-back -back plays, pressure was coming, steps up in the pocket, keeps his eyes down the field, and locates his targets and allows his playmakers to make plays. And he's keeping Alcorn State in this football game. There's one play that Felix Harper made today that really said a lot about him. It was on that interception that he threw. He tackled the man to save a touchdown. He only got a field goal out of it. That really speaks volumes about who he is. And, uh, Jay, you played the position. What's what's it like making a tackle after you've thrown a pick? Oh, not, not that you know anything about that. You think you're a linebacker. You want to hit him as hard as you can. You try to not do some de -cleaters on that. But, but I'm going I'm to throw this out there again. All Corn State, 34 turnovers this season. Forced turnovers. We haven't seen a turnover. From the Alcorn defense yet, they need to come up with a big one now. Special teams had one earlier, but you're right. Yep. The defense has yet to be able to come up with one so far. And you were on the call six in that SWAC championship against Southern. Against Southern. So they've got to get, become a little bit more aggressive, maybe leave their comfort zone and dial up some run blitzes, I think, to try and help out with the run game, but also try and create some uncomfortable situations for the Aggie offense. John May Martin back in the game. First down and 10 from the 33. Boy, Carter was swarmed that time by Solomon Muhammad. Here's the play I was talking about a little bit earlier. Felix Harper, after throwing an interception, saved a touchdown with that tackle. 
And he brought a little bit of heat on that tackle as well. You know what? I'll give him some bonus points. He led with his right shoulder. Mm -hmm. and he's a left-handed quarterback. Oh. He have to protect that. So showing he's <laughs> smart as well. That's the big play that they needed on first down yes. defensively for Alcorn. Get a and behind the chains. Changes the mindset. Changes yep. the play calling for Chris Barnett. Loss of six. Second and 16. Carter with time. Has a man... Wide open, room service down the sidelines. Banks! Banks! Gonna get his money! Touchdown! <laughs> 73 yards! An explosion of points here in this third quarter. How about the job by Banks in the open field? Talking about turning a defender around. Which way did he go? Which way did he go? <laughs> oh, Kinsler still trying to figure it out on second 16. Looked to wow. me like Heron got completely lost in coverage. Allowed Banks to be wide open. And wow, the onslaught of scoring continues here in the Celebration Bowl. Guys, 49 points scored in the third quarter alone. Each team's offense has responded when on the field. And that the lead back up to 21. And that one hurts. It's an obvious pass situation. Keep everything in front of you. How do you allow Banks to get 20 yards behind your secondary? That's going to cost them. Look at the numbers in the second half, Tiff. You're talking about Khalil Carter and just the type of season that he's had. But when you look over his career, he has always exhibited leadership. He told me earlier this week, we have to cherish this moment. I have to take in and soak in this moment. And he's been going on the sideline after every scoring drive, going up, thanking his teammates, his old line for creating a pathway for him. And he said he wanted to make the most of his last game in an ANT uniform. And I think he's doing so. Boy, is he ever. I think when you look at potential MVP candidates right now, he's at the top of the list. Well, think of it this way. His career high in touchdown pass in a game was three. He's doubled that up at this point. Yeah. A quarterback, you give me a quarterback over four touchdowns, over four touchdowns in a national championship game, that's MVP if they win it. But let's see, once again, how often do we have to say this? Can all four continue to score with North Carolina a &T. Under three minutes to go. It was Waller on the return. It'd be first and ten for Felix Harper in all corn state from the 18-yard line. Total of 83 points in this game so far. And the meter is still running. Harper hands it off to Waller into the boundary and pushed out of bounds right near the line of scrimmage. These teams have looked forward to this rematch, especially Alcorn State, since they met a little over a year ago here in Atlanta at the Celebration Bowl, the third chapter of it. And look at those numbers today. We came in with the number one SWAC defense, number one MEAC defense, and these defenses getting carved up in the third quarter. Mm, third quarter <laughs> a lot well. of this is a lot of third quarter offense. No Second and nine. Harper completes it at the 33 yard line to Pringle. Out to the 33. First down and 10. A pickup of 14. Pringle and Harper have a great connection. Pringle, a former high school quarterback, understands where to go and how to get open and those two on the same page all day. Harper hands it off. And nowhere to go. Big stop up the middle. That was Michael Branch. You know, getting it back to Pringle a little bit. I was uh, listening to him a little bit earlier. He was lamenting the fact that... Uh, he was going to be here with the Celebration Bowl, but back in uh, 
his hometown. Drake was going to be performing. <laughs> and he was going to miss it. The Champagne Poppy was going to be around. Dusty, I see what you're talking about. You said <laughs> lamenting. Hey, he's just getting started. Uh, lamenting lamenting in, a football, in a football call. <laughs> Pringle needs to make like the Champagne Poppy right now and do something. Help out his quarterback as Harper throws it out of bounds. Under a minute to go. That's an incompletion, but that's still an excellent play by Felix Harper. Three unblocked rushers come clean right now. Harper able to evade the rush, roll out, and at least get rid of the football so it's not a negative play. I thought you were going to give credit to Jermaine McDaniel, number 93, the defensive well, end. Could have given you uh, Leon Smalls, too, because they were all coming yeah, through. Ran down the line of scrimmage to force him to throw the ball away. There's a look at Mac McCain, their best DB on the sidelines right now for the Aggies. It's been banged up a little bit this afternoon. Under a minute to go. Derek Williams in at his spot. Harper brought down nicely from behind by Jermaine McDaniel. Who came into the game with six sacks on the season. Showed great agility on that play to bring down Felix Harper. It's good coverage down the field. Amir McNeil was one-on-one -on -one with Rodarius Anderson. That's initially where Harper wanted to go with the football. He saw the tight coverage. He had to eat it and then give credit to the pass rush. Jermaine McDaniel is able to get there and get him down well short of the first down. And we talked about earlier in the game how Harper relies so much on his pre-snap read. Mm -hmm. He was locked in on Anderson. The moment the play was called, they gave him a little exotic look. He was covered, had to double clutch a couple times. Ended up not making a great decision, and now they have to punt the football away. False start. Offense number 31. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Well, they're still punting. It's not going to cost them a whole bunch, but uh, they can ill afford penalties at this stage of the game. Alcorn State down by 21. Fifth punt of the afternoon for Corey McCullough. Averaging a little over... 40 yards per punt on the season. He's had two blocked. High snap, but he gets it down. And a tremendous spiral all the way back to the 20. Great punt. Banks still on his feet. And he takes it out to the 27-yard line. We got a flag on the play as well. A 49-yard punt. About eight yards on the return by Banks. Curious about what this call is. It's going to be on Derek Williams. I think it's going to be. I don't know if it's the blindside block I or the clip. It, I thought the. I think they're going to get him for a blindside block. I thought the return, the return man set him up. Blindside, personal foul, yeah. blindside block on the receiving team, number 21. Half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. First down. Folks, let's take a look at the Bowl Challenge Cup brought to you by Progressive. Last year's final results, Conference USA doing a nice job with 4-2 and two record. ACC and SEC with six wins. Last year's final standings. Got some great matchups this year in bowl games. And we're just getting underway. Last night, that was fun to watch Kent State. First nice. bowl victory yeah. ever. 33-year-old 33 33-year-old head coach. Exciting game. Pass tipped at the line of scrimmage, it looked like, but complete to Zachary Leslie. He takes it out to the 17-yard line. And that's going to be the last play of the third quarter. 45 minutes in the books. Yeah. One that we are well prepared for. I don't know if y'all realize the fact that people just say. Y'all about to break history. <laughs> Y'all finna do something that has never been done before. Three times, back to back to back national champion. Reliable, super fast network. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Some of the pertinent numbers and plays. Six. As for six touchdown passes today, a career high for Khalil Carter. He has been accurate. He has been efficient. He has been productive. He has been 
everything that Sam Washington wanted him to be and then some. And you almost get the feeling that Sam Washington had a premonition as we heard him speak before the team got on the bus several days ago. And they left Greensboro and headed towards Atlanta. His vision coming to fruition right now as we begin the final 15 minutes of play. Rutgers 13 of 23, 334 passing and adding to the total here. Corey Banks with another catch. It's a nice job there by the safety, Jawan Taylor, coming up and keeping outside, arm free, leveraging that play so his fellow defenders can come in and help out of the tackle, keeping Banks shy of the first down. Put, put you on the spot here. Yo. Third and three right now. Mm -hmm. Situation out. Do you go with the all-out kitchen sink blitz right now, try and get a stop, get the, try and disrupt something, or defensively, what are you doing, Dusty, right now? No, I'm not, because it's probably going to be an RPO, and if Khalil Carter reads that you're bringing everybody down, somebody's going to be open down the field. Mm -hmm. This is going to be another long touchdown. So as much as you'd like to, I'm not. I think you need that football back. You See have to coming. do whatever you can to get it back. Well, Carter's going to take matters into his own hands. He fumbled it. He might have been down first. I think they're going to rule that he was down at the 26-yard line. And he picks up enough for the first down on the predetermined quarterback run. Seven-yard gain. He's definitely down. Yeah. Good call by the official. Our fantastic stats man, Steve LeBeau, handed me this note. First quarter, three points scored combined between the two teams. Second and third quarter, 80 <laughs> scored between the two teams. Wow. Some fireworks here in oh, Atlanta today. They, they turned it around in the third quarter. It all began with that combustible 75-yard run in the first play of the third period. Right. Oh, another fumble! Still loose! Still loose! And the Braves have it at the 12. Torrance Wilson... That's the break they were looking for. Well, how many times do we have to say it? I thought my man Jay Walker was, I mean, he only said it five times. Alcor needs to come up with a takeaway, come up with a stop. They're number one in the FCS, and it was almost as if they didn't want this one. John Maiden Martin gets the ball knocked loose, and Alcorn couldn't come up with it until finally. Yeah, they, could, they almost had a scoop and score. Torrance Wilson. Able to get on top of it, and he tried to scoop and score it, but he gets stopped short. I mean, Mark not happy with himself after the fumble. Big opportunity here for the Braves. Nico Duffy in the backfield. Harper, open, touchdown. Here they come. Nigel Wood. They're not going away. This team's not going to quit. <laughs> the one thing North Carolina A&T could not do was turn over the football to give Alcorn right. hope. Now after the turnover, the touchdown, they're going to keep it going. I keep telling you, they're going to keep <laughs> fighting. Now, if their defense can show up and get a couple stops, this could be a barn burner for an ending. Well, they're able to convert on the turnover. Second touchdown reception this season by Wood. Well, Felix Harper has been huge so far today. Continues to keep his team in the football game. What do you do after a turnover? You got to cash in. RPO, he's under duress. He finds a wide open Nigel Wood. We got action in Atlanta. Switch to Boost Mobile and get four lines with unlimited gigs for $25 per line per month, plus four free Samsung Galaxy phones, all on our super reliable, super fast network. Some Olympian efforts, faster, higher, stronger, Roddy. I'm here with an Olympian, Mark. I'm here with Maritza McClendon, who is not only an Olympian, but a sister of Sigma Gamma Rho sorority, who's a part, who, and you've been a big part of the SWIM 1922 initiative. What is SWIM 1922? So SWIM 1922 is a partnership with Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated and USA Swimming, trying to raise awareness about the importance of learning how to swim. 64% of African-American children don't know how to swim. Sigma Gamma Rho said something needs to be done, and that's what we're doing. We're making those statistics go down as much as possible. And you guys had an event at Eastlake YMCA this week. What did you do there? 
Uh, we actually had a swim clinic. We wanted to make sure, you know, one of the biggest things about us is that we're trying to introduce the partnership to as many communities as possible. So for us to come to here in Atlanta, we had the Celebration Bowl going on. We said, let's let's go to, to YMCA and make sure that the kids there had that exposure to talk about swimming and learn how to get that introduction on how to get water safe. And service is such a big part of what you all do at Sigma Gamma Rho. How much credibility in the, on the service side does it give you when you wear those medals around? Oh, my gosh. It's actually kind of amazing. Even st standing here, you can see people in the crowd being like, who is that girl? <laughs> <laughs> so I love my medals. I love carrying them around. Kind of, It's really cool. <laughs> well, thank you, Maritza, and thank you for what you're doing for the community. Thank you so much. Maritza and the Sigma Gammas doing great work. Hey, man, I, I am Mr. Freestyle Swim. I'm sorry. I'm there already. Wow. I'm there already. I can get it. On the receiver screen. Right now, the Braves in Alcorn State uh, swimming against the stream right now. This could have been disastrous. Khalil Carter has to go all the way to his right. That's one of the as, that's as good of any of the touchdown the passes play. that he made the, so far. Huh. I mean, that could have been a game-changing type of play. Nice job by the quarterback securing a bad snap. Can the Braves defense get a stop here? By the way, there was a personal foul by Alcorn on the kickoff. It gave A&T this great field position. On second and ten. Martin. Brought down at about the 49-yard line. Remember, it was Solomon Muhammad, number 49, who said earlier, yeah, Martin's good. He all right, but he hasn't seen a linebacker like me in the MIA. Finally starting to see Alcorn State defensively show a little pep in their step, a little sense of urgency, trying to recover after getting knocked upside the head a couple times in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. Here in the fourth, trying to get off to a better start. Pass coverage here. Carter has time. Tough throw, completes it. Man, he is on his game. Leslie, the receiver at the other end of that toss. He threw it back against his body the other way to pick up 19. Well, they only had a three-man front, but then they bring pressure. We're going to see pressure come here, and then watch the protection. You got Jamey Martin here. You got the offensive line here. It allows Khalil Carter the time and allows the receiver the ability to get open. I mean, that's that's an outstanding job by the offensive if, line. Yeah, as a quarterback, if you're going to play zero coverage and bring pressure and not get to me, I'm going to make it hurt. Man-to-man -man coverage, find somebody downfield. When the offensive line does their job, you know it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. They can't cover for that long. Make him pay for it. Great job by Carter. What a day he's having. Career highs already in touchdown passes. Keeps it himself this time and picks up a couple yards. Tackle made by Webb. And I think we just have to give credit again to offensive coordinator Chris Barnett for North Carolina A&T. In obvious pass situations, which you hate, third and long, mm -hmm. they've seen it time and time again, and they've managed to get wide receivers wide open to convert for the first down. Milk in this clock for everything it has at this point. Is it too early to get too deliberate if you're the Aggies? I don't. I think this is yeah. smart. I mean, on a drive, on the move, got a great kicker too. By the way, mm. could make this a three-score game at that clock. Okay. With a pressure off the edge, and they blow the play up. The guy I was talking about a moment ago, Solomon Muhammad, was the first guy to make contact and had some help from Damian Anderson. Third and long coming up. Loss of four. As you mentioned, he's going to come right off the edge here, unscathed. And then it's Damian Anderson who finishes it off, moving from linebacker to defensive end this week because of a rash of injuries along the Alcorn defensive line. Yeah, they lost three defensive ends in the SWAC championship game. Third down here, and that pushes them right on the brink of field goal range. Maybe a defining moment here for Alcorn State defensively. Carter runs out of room in time. Pass is caught. 
right near the first down marker to Lockhart, but he's short. Did he Fourth catch down that? coming up. Wow, they what an individual it a reception. Effort. Take another look. By the way, that was a two-man rush there. They deployed nine in coverage. Lockhart goes down to get it. Boy, there's nothing there that's going to change my mind. Yeah, he made it. And that was once again an obvious passing situation. Third and long, and the Aggie offense converts to keep the drive alive. And get the fourth down on the sneak and keep the clock running with 8.35 to go. Wow. 14 point lead for the Aggies looking for another celebration bowl championship. They won this game a year ago, 24 to 22 against the Braves. And, uh, those defenders looking a little bit gassed right now. Some hands on hips. Lockhart in motion to the top of your screen. What a play. <laughs> he almost made lemonade out of lemons. Intended for Lockhart, but good pressure from Morrison off the corner. Well, it was almost straight lemons. I mean, that was a dangerous play right there. When you've got a lead like this in field goal range, I don't know. You got oh, he is fortunate right there because that's just over the outstretched hands yeah. of the defender coming in. Kinsler almost had a golden opportunity. I like the improvisation, but in that spot, I think you're better off just yeah. taking the sack. Yeah. Beat the ball, taking it. Alcorn very aggressive with the blitz, so they want more speed to collapse the pocket. So you mentioned Morrison, number 45, a cornerback who they have blitzing to try and disrupt. Uh, Carter may be feeling a little Teflon right now. Gets it out quickly to Martin. And Martin brought down immediately. Nowhere to go. They're going to lose a couple of yards. Kinsler making the tackle for a loss of two yards. Solid open field tackle there by Kinsler coming down from the safety position. It's there immediately. Third down coming up from just outside the 21 yard line. Clock running with 732 to go. And I saw something there. Elijah Bell, the senior wide receiver, number 13, was tapping his helmet to come out of the game. They've told him to stay out there. Normally, when that happens, that means they're trying to dial up a specialty play for that particular person. Take a look at Bell. Split to the bottom of your screen. There he is. But look his way. Got it off in time. Contact. Wow. No flag on the play. <laughs> Payback. Defended by <laughs> Alan Bruce. Oh. They, well, the Braves might have had a call on layaway. They owe him a couple of penalties from the first <laughs> half. But like I said, when they told Bell stay in the game, he's the guy they go to for those 50-50 well, jump balls. This is but inexcusable. This <laughs> How do you not call that? He grabbed his jersey and darn near pulled him to the ground. Wow. I mean, Alan Bruce was holding him like a grudge on that play. Sure looked like it there. 38-yard field goal attempt coming up from Noel Ruiz. And he has been Mr. Reliable this year. Two for two on the day. The lead up to 55-38. Speaking of HBCUs, we got a couple ESPN fan members that have attended. It's so great having the Celebration Bowl on ABC in front of a national audience because it gives these universities a chance to not only showcase their football teams and their bands, but also their universities. With a situation like this, when you, are, when you have that national platform available to you, it can do wonders, not just for you as an individual, but the institution that you come from.
These are sisters. <laughs> Brothers? Brothers from another mother? This is TikTok. Here's a look at this year's recipients of the ROTC Senior of the Year Award, presented by Navy Federal Credit Union. Charles Bloom of NC State, Nicole Butler, Notre Dame, Jennifer Phillip Brown of Florida. The award spans the entire country and all branches of the ROTC, celebrating students who embody leadership, military excellence, scholarship, and community service. And this one will come out for a touchback. First down and 10 with the clock winding down on the Braves. We'll look for a little redemption and atonement from last year's game. Felix Harper coming back into the ball game, facing a daunting challenge when we return to Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Don't mess with my discount. What are my other options? Get a discount up to 30% with Drive Safe and Save from State Farm. The Celebration Bowl on ABC is brought to you by Dollar General. Save time, save money every day. And Pacific Life, 150 years strong. Protection and retirement solutions for your future. Both conference champions at the Georgia Aquarium. Uh, back to the action on the field. Harper going to work. He's got a lot of it ahead. Picks up the first down. The catch made at the other end. Anderson. Hey, Roddy, uh, what was that... Uh, aquarium trip all about well, well well mark look I, i've been to multiple dinners at the aquarium and, and every time i've been to dinner at the aquarium they have served seafood uh oh as well as other things but but it's awkward when you're at the aquarium and then they serve you seafood i mean you, you don't know whether you should enjoy it or not <laughs> yeah. so you might be looking at squidward and eating some octopus at the same time i was <laughs> like if, when you go to texas i want some beef brisket See all the cattle running got, around there? You got no beef. problem with that, right? <laughs> I got no problem no, with it. <laughs> I eat seafood anywhere. Yeah, Roddy, you got to get over that, man. I, 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 I think it's easier for you guys. I, I don't know. It's just something about staring at the mahi when they serve you mahi-mahi. Like, I don't know. Is this, is this a relative? It's, it's just awkward. Tiff, you don't have a problem with that, right? Not at all. You good on that? I, I down it all, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> you bring it to my plate, I'm going to eat it. Part of the festivities around the Celebration Bowl. This pass complete to Waller. Waller with a couple nice moves and looks like he got the first down. Let's see where they spot the football. 6.23 to go. And he got the first down on a 10-yard gain. Sam Washington, his team up 55-38. And uh, do we start using the, the dynasty word when... If they hang on and win this, another celebration bowl? I think you have to. I mean, you know, dealing with, with the Aggies and, you know, I talk about them being the hottest HBC in the country. They expect to be here in Atlanta every okay. year. You know, we talked about their, they're getting transferred. Ant Antoine Wilder didn't play in this game. Transfer from South Carolina to North Carolina a &T. You know why? He said because they expect to play in the celebration bowl every mm -hmm. year, and I want to play in that game. And when you start thinking that along those lines, it reminds me of, North Dakota State. The Bison Faithful, mm. they booked their hotel reservations for Frisco, Texas in January. <laughs> plan on it, right? They plan on it. And I think that with A&T talking with them this week, they expect to win. Not just get here. Yep. They expect to win this. Mm. And anytime five years of the Celebration Bowl, four out of five championships, three straight, that's a dynasty yeah. in my book. Yeah, they check all the boxes. Harper with a nice move, doing his best, Lamar Jackson. Eluding a couple of defenders. And speaking of Lamar Jackson and Monday Night Football, Week 16, Aaron Rodgers. 11-3 Packers can clinch the NFC North with a win over Kirk Cousins and the 10-4 Vikings. But Minnesota is undefeated at home this season. And a Viking win would force a tie atop the division heading into Week 17. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN as well as ESPN Deportes, the ESPN app. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6. Speaking about the Bison, playing right now. Right. Rolling. We're up 29-7 right now in that Fargo Dome. Looks like they'll be seeing y'all down in Frisco. That's right. Our crew's going to be on the 
January 11th. Substitution infraction on defense 12 in the formation. That penalty is declined. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, replay first down. They're going to run it back. First down all over again. Been a frustrating day for that guy. Felix Harper playing catch up here. But he's had a great day, too. Yeah, I mean, we can't knock him. He's, yeah. he's over 300 yards passing. He'll have the one interception, but besides that, I mean, he's been pretty calm, cool, and collected, and gathered himself, and he's put his team in a position to win. Just the defense has not been there for him. Harper overshoots his man who was open. That was LaCharles Pringle. Well, guys, you, you've been talking about North Carolina A&T coming to the Celebration Bowl. Todd Simmons, North Carolina a and vice chancellor for university relations, has said they've set records in applications and enrollment because of the coming to the Celebration Bowl. They did an independent study where they determined that millions of dollars of exposure and marketing were given just by playing in this game. So not unlike we've seen other universities like a Clemson right down the road. Playing in this game on a national stage has certainly helped not only the football program, but the school. Yeah, so many benefits, Roddy, as flag thrown on the tackle by Howard. Looks like we got a face mask as Felix Harper was brought down. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 54. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. 16-yard game. And, you know, the follow-up on what Roddy said, they embrace being in this national stage, and we've seen them grow. They weren't always the largest HBCU. That happened within the last five years mm -hmm. of doing it. They're hot, and leadership starts at the top. And how hot is North Carolina A&T? Y'all know I'm a Howard guy. Right. My daughter goes to North Carolina A&T, so therefore my money goes to North Carolina A&T. <laughs> <laughs> Helping out the program, Jay. Don't First don't and goal. That. Don't remind <laughs> <laughs> Indirectly. Harper on the slant. Got his man at the four. Pringle trying to get into the end zone and stopped up at the two-yard line with just under five minutes to go. A determined bit of running by LaCharles Pringle, but stopped up short. They are still fighting. All mm -hmm. court is going to the, to the end. The offensive unit continuing to move the football. Down 17. Harper keeps it himself and scores the touchdown with 4.36 to go. Defensive end collapses. And Felix Harper's going to call his own number as he strolls into the end zone. We talking dynasty and all that. Alcorn saying, wait a minute, yeah. we got time left on the clock. Second touchdown of the day for Felix Harper. There's a look what, what they're playing for. Celebration Bowl trophy. Alcorn State looking to take it home for the first time. Down by 11 right now. Potentially 10 in a second here. High snap. They airmail it over the centers, over the holder's head. And McCullough trying to make a tackle. McNeil recovers it. And they're going to get two out of this the easy way. They self-destruct and a cataclysmic error there by Alcorn State just when they were giving themselves a chance. Still a two-score game, but now it's a two-touchdown game, yeah. right? Instead yeah. of a touchdown and a field goal, they can get themselves back in it. Bad snap. Unable to get on the football. And Amir McNeil, scoop and score. Mm. I mean, just air mailed the snap. Yeah. Nothing that could be done right there. Just one of those days for all court state. Fred McNair, the head coach, has to be thinking, why didn't we just bring our A game to the ballpark? But yeah. I like how you take the positive road out of it, Dusty. <laughs> it's still just a two-score game. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. If there's one team I know that will fight it back against that Aggie pride, it's the brains of Alcorn State University. Plus four free Samsung Galaxy phones, all on our super reliable, super fast network. You're watching the 2019 Celebration Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. From Atlanta, Georgia. And a Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Boy, what a shootout today. 101 total points. A record point. 
try to pooch it. And a fair catch called. Boy, a nice play at the 35-yard line by Leslie. Let's go back to Kevin Agandi in the studio. We saw Bouchelle a little bit earlier. He's having a great year for the Mustangs. So we've got a two-score game here. And the officials determining the line of scrimmage and the spot here at the 41-yard line after an offsides penalty. It's that time you want now. We're four minutes left. Four minutes off. Four minutes. Got the fullback in the game. I love that. Watch the big fella. He's going to mix it up. Carter going to keep himself. Never mind the big fella. Carter going to try and house it. Just short of the two-yard line. Look what I found. <laughs> we had a little talk earlier about who may be the MVP of this game. Is that, I mean, we thought yeah. it was sealed, but now yeah. he can add on to the rushing yards. I like the patience there, allowing the blocks to set up, the hole to open up. And Khalil Carter, he's done it in every way today, right? Six touchdown passes, doubles up his career high. A big carry right there. Coming into the game, really was more of a productive runner than a thrower. 96 yards on the ground today. Just an unbelievable afternoon. Back in his home city. Yeah, he, he was leaking a little bit of oil at the end <laughs> I of that no line. doubt about that. <laughs> <laughs> like no he doubt. wanted to get tackled. 55 yards on the sprint by Carter. Hands it off this time to Martin. Touchdown. And he looks at his arm and says, I got that special stuff in my veins. Jamain Martin with another score. And, you know, that one will probably do it. Yesterday when we were watching the team warm up, and A&T had custom-made sweatshirts, yep. and on the back it said, ring season. Yep. <laughs> Size up the rings, and I think right now is about time to go ahead and place yeah. your order. Yeah. They're going to add some jewelry to the collection with a dominating performance here. Two plays, 59 yards. The 55-yard run by Khalil Carter, the big one, and Martin finished it off. To think that, boy, midway through the first quarter, after the first quarter, this was looking like a 24-21 type of game and an offensive explosion in the second half. Tonight, after the RNL Carriers, New Orleans Bull on ESPN Sports Center with John Anderson and Michael Eves. We'll break down Bill's Patriots with the AFC East title up for grabs, plus Rams 49ers postgame press conferences and reactions from all six bowls. Sports Center tonight, right here on ESPN. And the ESPN app. 107 points, over 1,000 yards of total offense mm. here in today's celebration bowl. Nobody saw that coming. A G of total offense? I mean, I'm more impressed with 107 points. <laughs> I don't know the last time I saw over 100 points in a ball game. How about 108? Some impressive numbers by Martin. Especially in the second half, man. And you look at North Carolina A&T. We mentioned the D word, dynasty. Yeah, go take a few selfies. You deserve it. Uh, that's lit. <laughs> that's lit. During the game, going over there, selfies. They didn't have that back in the day with the new yeah. stadium and the right fans that close to He's you. a running back of the people. Yeah. <laughs> and don't forget, we got our... Post-game celebration and a lot going on after the final buzzer here. Fans, check out the ESPN app for the post-game trophy ceremony presented by Capital One immediately following the game. You don't hear the term three-peat in college football a whole lot, but that's what North Carolina A&T is looking at right now with a win here potentially. They're talking about rings, blings. And a whole bunch hey. of shiny stuff. Man. Can they get me bigger? Got more carrots than a rabbit on those fingers. <laughs> First and ten coming back the other way. 
Boy, what a great job by Sam Washington and his staff. And still total respect for Felix Harper and Fred McNair, head coach of Alcorn State. That tackle made by Jermaine McDaniel. But in the second half, when Jamaine Martin made that run on the first play of the third quarter, you kind of sense that they had a little bit extra. Well, that expression from Coach McNair doesn't change much, does it, Jay? One of those whether they're up they or down. Yeah, yeah. Whether they're up or down. He's, he's the, the calm and force that they need to have there. Explosive football team, but they just went up against a bus all today in North mm. Carolina a &T. And, you know, you think about the McNair name, great football lineage at Alcorn State and beyond. And, uh, boy, you could make a real good case for his late brother being in the Hall of Fame, couldn't you? You don't even have to make a case. I mean, yeah. numbers don't speak for themselves. I yeah. mean, one of the most pro prolific quarterbacks in America, any level of football. I mean, you play FCS football and you end up going, becoming a Heisman Trophy finalist. Records that stood for decades. He's got to be in the College Football Hall of Fame. That's a disservice yeah. to Alcorn State and to anybody that's a fan of college football in general. Took his Tennessee Titans team to within a couple of yards of winning a Super Bowl, too. Pass complete to Deshaun Waller. And he had a very illustrious, productive career. And his senior year was just incredible. Clips 5,000 yards passing, mm. well over 50 touchdowns, as Jay alluded to, from an FCS school, finished third in the Heisman Trophy right. running. It, when you really think about it, it is a disservice to college football that Steve Aaron McNair yeah. is not in College Football Hall of Fame. We've seen Doug Williams... Uh, you guys look at the jersey number. You know, we saw Doug Williams a little bit earlier. We talked about James Harris. I'm old enough to remember when James Harris was like a guy that played quarterback, and there weren't a whole lot of African Americans at that position. Hey, you know, Shaq, when, Shaq is here, man. You want me to introduce you to him, man? Yeah. Oh, man. Hook okay. me up. Hook me up. <laughs> Back after this. Fast Network. Back at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, Mark Jones, Jay Walker, Dusty Dvorak, Tiffany Green, Roddy Jones down on the sidelines. Another uh, storied edition of Alcorn State against North Carolina A&T. And uh, the pain and suffering etched across the countenance of the Braves players there on the sidelines. Let's go back to the studio and Kevin. A lot of fireworks here, Kevin. Total of 108 points. We started the day talking about celebrating. Celebrating football. Celebrating dynasties. Celebrating the culture. Celebrating the crib of the civil rights movement here in Atlanta. And the celebration for North Carolina a and about to turn up a notch or two. With one minute to go. And now for today's Capital One player of the game. This one was easy. You don't have to graduate magna cum laude to know that it was Khalil Carter. With a career high six touchdown passes. A career day for him. For the grad student. He's got his teammates dancing on the sidelines right now. Head coach Sam Washington took the Gatorade bath. What do you think about the execution, guys? Oh, pretty good. <laughs> they didn't miss. The accuracy was there, wasn't it? That was well done. <laughs> That's a good feeling. There's the where's my money dance right <laughs> yeah. there. Uh, oh, you heard this one here. You know, they, they have a phrase, and I always say it's like they brainwash those kids when they first get there. Aggie pride. They teach him that day one, and I think this could be one of the proudest days of North Carolina A&T football. Three times Celebration Bowl champion, three consecutive championships. The 
Rafidi in a quarterback. Keeps it himself out near the 38-yard line. Brought down just shy of it with 55 seconds to go. Alcorn State with one timeout remaining to stop the clock if they choose. Martin got it started in the third quarter. Really turned the tide and the whole vibration of this game, didn't he? At first play of the third quarter. Crazy to think that he had seven carries for one yard in the first half, and he hit him for a 75-yard home run out yeah. the gate. Let me put you on the spot, Dustin. You, you go around the country, you see a lot of stuff there on the major program level. How would Jamey Martin fit in at a program? Oh, I think he could play just about anywhere. As we take a look at Khalil yeah. Carter, Coach Washington, but I think Jamey Martin, speed, power, vision. I mean, again, he's going to play on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, I think. I mean, obviously, he's got a year left to come yeah. back if he so chooses, which I would think he would. Uh, but he's an NFL football player, no question. I don't know, man. If I'm John May Martin, I'm like Coach Washington and recite that phrase, bring me my money. <laughs> Go get the bag. On the return, this is Pringle. Well, let's, let's not forget, North Carolina A&T has had a player drafted to the NFL for the last three years in a row. Yeah. Yeah. Coach might be saying this after the game again. I tell you what, you all have hearts of champions. Oh, yes, yeah. sir. And the heart of a life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be saying that again in the locker room. Great job by Aaron Mizell getting that video in the post game. And you know who it might be this year? Elijah Bell. Elijah Bell. Elijah yep. Bell. Being if, drafted. If, if John yep. Main Martin doesn't come out, which I don't think he will, yep. Elijah Bell is going to have a chance yep. to be drafted. Marcus Pettiford, the left tackle. Yeah. Graded out well. Coaches say a lot of NFL interest has come from him. I wonder his length is be yep. the only thing. He may have to slide in and play inside. guard. Yep. At the next level, might not have that length of an offensive tackle, but those two guys, they're going to have a chance to keep the streak alive. A celebratory mood along the sidelines for the Aggies. As Waller runs it again. Actually, that time it was Duffy with 24 seconds to go, clock running. Alcorn State out of timeouts. Boy, what a day for the Aggies. And their band will have time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll give it to them. This one is cooked, glazed, and sliced. 64 44, the final score. For Tiffany, Roddy, Dusty, Jay, and our entire gang, I'm Mark Jones. Right now, we're going to send it to the studio for College Football Scoreboard. Welcome everyone to the 2019 Celebration Bowl Trophy Ceremony presented by Capital One. Well, the festivities down in the field are about to begin, but first, this message. Well, welcome to the 2019 Celebration Bowl Trophy Ceremony. Presented by Capital One, the festivities down in the field about to begin. But first, let's go downstairs to Tiffany. Khalil, congratulations. You played the game of your life in front of your home audience. You said you wanted to cherish this moment. What does it feel like right now? It's a great feeling, especially doing it with the guys I did it with. I couldn't ask for anybody else. You have played an integral role in this team throughout your career, but to end it as a starter in the Celebration Bowl, a game you missed last year, how does that make you feel, and what does this moment come to? It's a, it's a blessing. I was, I've been thanking God every day because last year I didn't have this opportunity to come out here and play for these guys, play for the fans. It's just a great feeling. It's an awesome feeling. A few years back, I asked Tariq Cohen, what did he have for breakfast that sparked such a great performance for you? A single season game record, six touchdowns, 460 yards of total offense. 
What'd you have for breakfast, man? Uh, word on the street. They told me I was going to have 50 yards passing. So that's kind of what I had for breakfast. You use that as motivation, this three-peat, and the, what does this say about this North Carolina A&T program who's submitted themselves as a dynasty? Uh, if you buy in, do what the coaches say, do what they ask of you, you get wins out of it, you get championships out of it. And that's why people come to North Carolina A&T. All right, thanks. Congratulations, Khalil. Back up to you, Mark. Victorious quarterback as we take a look at tonight's Capital One rewarding performance. And Khalil Carter was the hub. He was the epicenter. He was the catalyst and the creator for them offensively. 18 of 30 passing, 364 yards <laughs> through the air, and a career-high six touchdowns. He also ran the ball 13 times for 96 yards and really was poised, settled them down when they needed to be settled down, and after trailing early, once he got on track, they never looked back. Found Corey Banks a couple of times for big plays. And Khalil Carter owned the day for the Aggies. And this was the 55-yard run near the end of the game that really put it away. A backbreaker for Alcorn State. Let's go to Roddy. Guys, I'm here with Jamaine Martin, the guy who got it all started in the second half. Jamaine, it was a little bit of a struggle in the first half for you, a little bit frustrating. What was your attitude at halftime? Uh, you know, I just, I know that wasn't my best football, and I had to come out and play better, you know. So, you know, my team got behind me to keep my head high, and uh, we got out here and got it done. So you come out early in the second half. You have that explosive run down the field, long run for a touchdown. What did that feel like? You know, it felt good, you know, just for my O-line to, get that block and, and give me a crease you know it's a blessing you know and i love all them boys shout out to them three in a row how's that sound hey different that's what it's how it sounds it sounds real different you know and i'm it's just a blessing to even be here you know i, I love a and and everybody associated with it and i'm forever grateful it's a little bit of a redemption story for you with everything that you've gone through what does this moment mean it means everything you know what i'm saying like i didn't been through so much you know i could write a book about it you know so it's just like to be here right now is just a blessing, you know. I just got to thank God. We look forward to reading that book. Congratulations. Go enjoy it with your teammates. Thank you. thank you. Well, that book has a happy ending to it. Coming back from adversity, began his career at Coastal Carolina. And that's what they will take back to Greensboro and put it back in their trophy case again. Actually, just add another one to the box. Final thoughts, uh, Dusty, from what you saw today and how this ended. Well, Khalil Carter was just fantastic. You know, all corner of the first half was going to try to take away that man, Jamain Martin. And when they did it, it was a detriment to the back end of their defense. They took deep shots down the field. And the quarterback playing his final game for a and waited so long for this moment, back in his home city, had the game of a lifetime on the biggest stage that he's seen. I give it up to Khalil Carter. I thought we'd see more defense today. Huh. Defense was optional, <laughs> and nobody was selecting uh, to be a part of that. But fun game to be a part of. Give Alcorn State credit, too. They never quit. They never gave up. They continue to fight to the very end to make it a competitive game. But in the end, too much a t offense, too much Khalil Carter, too much John May Martin, and a dynasty is born here in Atlanta today. We always said the dynasty was in the making. Well, uh, it's reality. Yeah. It, it's here right now. And uh, North Carolina A&T, the hottest team in the country right now. When I think about Alcorn State, I don't necessarily think about how poorly they played because they scored 44 points. It's right. just the big plays that they gave mm -hmm. up. There are about five or six plays that really changed this football game around. And Craig McNair said, in order to beat a t we're going to have to be perfect. They were good. They just weren't perfect, and that's why they took the loss today. And we're going to go back down to the field in Tiffany Green. Tiffany? Well, fellas, given the fact that a t has won four of the last five years, but that dynasty of a three-peat started in 2017 when they go with an undefeated season to close out Rod Broadway's career at a t the living legend, if you will, that in 2018, again, they come back and take down an all-corn state team by two points and then finish it off with the most points that they've scored in the postseason posting 64 points on the all corn state braves
What a way to end the decade for North Carolina A&T three-peating as HBCU national champions and winners of the Celebration Bowl. Thank you to each conference, both the MEAC and the SWAC, the fans, the bands, and all who participated to make this event go on. As we start our trophy presentation, we would like to welcome up the executive director of the Celebration Bowl, Mr. John Grant, as he will make the trophy presentation and give a few remarks about this special occasion. What a game, what a game. How about those Aggies? On behalf of ESPN Events and the Celebration Bowl Committee, we want to congratulate the North Carolina a &T Aggies and their fans for another outstanding game. Congratulations as national champions. We would like to welcome up the coaches, staff, along with some of some special players from North Carolina A&T who helped propel them to a 64-44 victory over all Corn State. First, we'd like to give our offensive MVP award. And I think it might be no surprise to you all, given the fact that Khalil Carter, coming back to his hometown for his final game, had a career performance, 460 total yards of offense, threw for six, ran for another. An outstanding performance from the graduate of North Carolina A&T, and the signal caller will come onto the stage in just a moment as congratulations is continuing to flow over here. Aggie pride is strong, so I know I hear it all season long. Can I get a Aggie pride? Aggie. Coach Washington, I'll talk to you in just a moment, but. This stage belongs to Khalil Carter for the job that he did. Khalil, come on this way. Came from Austell, Georgia. You were here last year, but you watched from the sideline with a broken leg. You got a chance to start in this game, your final game in an Aggie uniform. What did you tell yourself going into this game to help you build up to a moment like this? Uh, it was just a blessing to be here. And I knew that I've been thanking God every day. And the opportunity came and we took advantage of it. How did it fuel your fire, knowing the way that you've contributed throughout your career to try to end on top? Uh, it's always been in my heart to try to end on top. You know, you wanna, you wanna start, I mean, you wanna finish harder than you start. And I feel like that's what we did today. You told me before, when you look at this Alcorn State team, who was the number one in the SWAC, they wanted to test you as a passer. What do you feel like you proved and showed today? I feel like we proved it. We proved it. Receivers made plays on the outside. My offensive line gave me time, and we went out there and did the thing. Lastly, the legacy you feel like you've left in Greensboro and with this a and program. Uh, I love all the fans, all the fans that believed in me. All, the, all, all my classmates, all the students, thank y'all. I can't thank y'all enough. Congratulations, Cleo Carter, as John Grant will award you the offensive MVP for the 2019 Celebration Bowl. And we're not done yet handing out these awards. The hits keep coming. This time on the defensive side of things, Jacob Roberts, the defensive MVP for the Celebration Bowl. And Jacob, I have to say that is a high honor knowing that true freshmen don't start on this offense all that often. For you to come in and work your way into this position, what does this moment mean to you in your first season? I mean, it means a lot, you know, I came in in the summer. Uh, coach got me in the film room, we worked every day, made sure I learned the plays. I'm just uh, glad he gave me the opportunity to uh, play on this defense early. Understanding the great players that have come before you, what were some words of advice that you received to play 
on this platform, on this stage, in front of a national audience? Um, my teammates always tell me, just be myself. Just play my game. If you just play your game, we're going to be successful. Lastly, a three-peat. That's tough to do. What's to come as you usher in a new chapter and a new decade with this Aggie defense? Uh, we don't call it the Aggie Bowl for no reason. Point made. Simple and sweet. Jacob Roberts, the defensive MVP for the 2019 Celebration Bowl. And lastly, Coach Sam Washington with Commissioner Dr. Dennis Thomas out of the MEAC, Chancellor Martin on the stage as well. We've heard all season long, it started back with a little video that circulated around the, the internet, a few things you may have said. You got a viral moment and quote for me right now, being back to back to back. <laughs> HBCU uh, National Champions. No, I really don't have one uh, one quote moment, but uh, I would like to say I'm very grateful and I'm very proud of our fans. We had the best fan base in football. I don't care where we are, they show up and show out. And that is, uh, that's appreciated. What did you say to your guys in the locker room? Now, I know you're a defensive guy, so you're looking at those 44 points that you all gave up, and that can't sit well with you, but Speak to the offensive effort that you saw and the way that Khalil Carter was not only challenged, but rose to the occasion. Well, I thought um, the players did a great job. So did the coaches. Uh, they did a very good job, you know, with gap schemes. So we decided to go vertical. Let's go over the top of it. And um, it worked for us. And, and Khalil had an outstanding day. He kept his eyes downfield. He was very poised and uh, threw some strikes. The receivers caught the ball. So it worked out for us. You told us earlier this week that last year's Celebration Bowl win, you were overcome with emotion, but you told yourself that you could do it. How does this second one feel for you, and what did you tell yourself this time around? I can't wait to next year. <laughs> That's the real deal. I start thinking of the future, right? I think it's um, now's the time. Now's the time, and uh, so we'll come up with a plan to uh, be back next year. Lastly, how would you characterize the way that you've closed out this decade? Three peats aren't easy to come by, but when you talk about this North Carolina a and program, Dynasty comes to mind. For you, what is it? Um, it's, it's, it's people and, and it's players. You know, that's what it's all about. I'm surrounded with some of the best people in the world and some of the best players in the world. My job is easy. That's all I have to do is keep them between the strikes. So I'm just grateful. Congratulations to you, Coach Sam Washington. And I think you want a piece of hardware that you've come very familiar with as the North Carolina a and Aggies have made an appointment here and made Atlanta their second home. He will be presented with the Celebration Bowl trophy, a grand moment once more for the Aggies of North Carolina a and State University. And what a celebration it has been. The 2019 Celebration Bowl did not disappoint in any form or fashion. Thank you to all of the fans, the outstanding players and coaches. Celebrate good times. And Coach Washington, I'm going to have you go out with a little dance with us. A little hey. celebrate because I want to see hey. you celebrate some good times. Thank you to you all and have a good evening.